Ahoy, wonders! Welcome back to the table. Ah, good to be here. Good to be back. Just reading the monster manual. That's uh, always a good sign, I'm guessing. But yeah. hey, it's, not, it's none oh. of my none of my business. None of my business. Hi, Actually, well, hi. We're here now, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's probably a lot of my. No, business. Nothing's pro nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. It's okay. Uh, it will be. <laughs> that's good. So where we left off last time, Dagon rolled to get laid, and he got a nat 20. So that means he got laid super good. Nice. And there are several people who have made bad decisions that evening. <laughs> <laughs> where last we left our heroes, uh, you guys had a talk with Josephine, who is an associate to the Ashdrakes. Uh, she had stated to you that there is some vampire activity going on in the plateau to what and she has no real idea, but the reason why Hippolyte was attacked was because one of them was blood-starved and needed to eat. Uh, so she figured that it would be something to intervene, not only for the fact that, you know, she saved someone of the Neris's life, but also having a, having a council member who used to be on the, uh, on the marketplace for rubies would be a bad thing for the vampires to get a hold of. Yes. Uh, into the night, you guys spoke to the guard uh, who had asked you, well, since now that there's a vampire debacle that they have to take care of, they would like you to accompany a uh, councilman of the Neris clan to find their missing son who was captured by a bandit called Almorad. Yes. The the uh, dragonborn. <laughs> yes, the dragonborn son, Zarl. Yes. Who, uh, they asked you guys to at least stay within the inn to... Uh, wait for the kobold militia, or at least like the four kobolds you met before, to meet up with you and give you any other proper information. Uh, and the other news that you've uh, found out is that there has been a satyr going about trying to find brave adventurers to help him find the Splendor Maw. Beyond that, the morning sun is rising. It is blaring, and you're in the middle of the desert, so it's fucking horrible. Nice. Like, it's like immediately someone turns on a fucking, like, blinding spotlight in your room as soon as the sun hits. That's through I, the blackout curtains. Oh, my. I'm, I'm just imagining Dagon sitting by an open window, two women just rolling in the bed behind him, just, what is life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kratos. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you guys wake up and uh, you head downstairs. Uh, what do you guys do? Well, Eloy and me are roommates tonight, in case you've forgotten. <laughs> oh no, I have not forgotten, but I'm saying, like, it is now morning, what do? Uh, you would see Ezra emerge, probably looking, I'm gonna say still sleepy, but like, you know, not like he got zero rest, but just tired-ish. Mm. Just because he's not a morning person. Man, it's been like a week, but still every morning I wake up with the first thought, wonder what Grammy's made for. Oh, so I, I wonder we'll get what used they. To it, Eloy. I wonder what they got for breakfast downstairs in the common room. <laughs> <laughs> Dagon would probably wash up with whatever water bowl was provided for the room or whatever whatever wash bin there is. As you say that, you go downstairs. You have you get this really strong, like almost smell of crab, almost like the same kind of stuff that Grammy used to serve to you guys. You head downstairs as there is a, like, what looks like a Doberman-sized scorpion on a platter split open down the middle for you guys to pick at with forks. Mm, that looks horrible. And if I've learned anything from eating with Grammy, that means it's probably great. Oh, no, dear. I, I've, uh, oh, you're, you're what, some of the sea folk, aren't you? Uh, ish. <laughs> I mean, not originally, obviously. Well, no, but if, do you know what a crab is? Are you rolling to see if you know what a fucking crab is? I, I, you know what? It's a fair question. You fought one when you were tiny. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but did anybody call it a crab at the time? <laughs> Could it be identifiable? <laughs> yeah, I, they're like mini monstrosities. Well, scorpions are like that, only they're more, mostly on land, dear. Land it's, it's, sea crabs. But don't, don't let them touch you with this bit. She, like, points over to the stinger. That's full of poison. So we probably shouldn't eat that part either. Oh no, we we got rid of the venom sack. It's right here. She holds up a purple sack in her hand. What are you gonna do with that? Well, we can sell it off to someone who uses poison. All right. <laughs> you were just throwing it out. Thought I might have a place, but if you've got if you have buyers in mind, no, we don't I'll... have buyers yet. Dagon comes down eventually, followed very casually by two girls with buyer's remorse. I'll uh, give you ten <laughs> silver. 
You come in mid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, you come down to like, just like, <laughs> how do you feel about 10 silver for the scorpion sack? I came in at a good time, just holding like my, my coat <laughs> over my shoulder. Yep. Uh, roll persuasion. Nine. That's too low, dear. Even for, for one this size, I'd have to say this is at least 10 gold. Well, that's that's a bit out of my price range, but you know what? I'm I'm sure you'll find some interested buyer. I say, walking away very dejectedly, but also clearly still being like, maybe if I say this with enough confidence, she might change her mind. <laughs> Inflation's a bitch out here. Yeah, tell me about it. So, do you guys take t uh, partake of the scorpion? I Dagon. do. Yep, Dagon does. All right, roll con saves. Are we sure, Grammy? <laughs> uh, seventeen. 16. Natural wonders. Hey. <laughs> All right, for you guys, like you've never had this before, but if you're you're thinking that it's crab, then it must be of the same thing since it's the same kind of creature in in its uh genus. Mm -hmm. Dagon, this is nothing special. You've had this before. It's it's bog standard. It tastes it's an adequate meal. Mm. It's fresh. Yep. Arr. Yeah, that's a fresh kill. Someone just brought this in the uh, uh, like a couple of nights ago. Uh, mm, Eloy, have, you didn't find this next to an ogre corpse, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, dear. Okay. We wouldn't. We, oof, we. He's probably eaten and tainted that far worse than I than anyone else could have. I'm not just making sure we didn't waste good food. I didn't. I didn't even think about it. Well, you you put this thing to your mouth, and you just cannot handle how weird this texture is. You immediately like. It's immediately like a child who like gets a piece of broccoli for, for the first time. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm confident we didn't waste good food. <laughs> it's like really chewy slime. Mm. You know, it's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. No, it's like you're eating. You guys are eating like the the. It's like like but a crab claw in a way. You just yeah. break it open and there you go. There's crunch to it though. It's this. There's this extra like weird additional texture on top of like just basic crab on top of it. It's almost like this weird filmy taste. Uh, you two, since you rolled pretty high. Yes. Uh, you two get uh, and for the rest of the day, you get one advantage roll on a con, on a con save. Okay. All right. I just got to throw myself at those. Thing and fighting vampires probably won't be. Let me roll for free to see if she. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling they'll they'll find a way. Let me roll for free to see if she gets the same benefit. She doesn't get the benefit. She's kind of like midway on this. She's like she has no idea what she's eating either. She's kind of like you in that in that regard. She just like looks over you, just like. No. <laughs> Eloy's like trying to be polite, like making chewing motions while actually having spit it into his napkin some time ago. <laughs> Uh, you look on the uh, roll of perception check, Eloy. Uh, 24. Okay. Uh, you feel the base of your chair kind of, like, almost jar a little. Not not even, well, you don't have a chair. You feel <laughs> some something hit the bottom end of your leg. You look down, and it looks like a cat. But it's like a really like almost a Siberian uh, Siberian forest cat. But you could swear that you're looking down at it, and it looks like it has wings. It's pawing at you, almost looking at you like it wants something. Oh, hi! Hello, hi, buddy. I take a piece of the scorpion meat, hold it down for it. He bats it out of your hand and takes it. All he right. Starts, starts chewing away at it. Oh, you're a hungry buddy. Who's cat? Thing. Uh -huh. You guys roll perception I, check. I was going to say, I look to see if I can see it. Uh, bu 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 19. 19? They got yeah, you see it. Coffee. Just, just <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't care either pick, which pick, way. Picking up a newspaper if there's one nearby. You, you look <laughs> down, there it is. There's like this really bright orange cat with wings. It's really fluffy, like eating at, at uh, Eloy's feet. Oh, hey there, little fella. Pistachio. <laughs> Tidings and good joy to the lot of you. 
It doesn't move its mouth, but you hear a voice come from it. Does Dagon hear it as well? No, you do not. You didn't look. Cool. How? <laughs> oh, okay. You're a you're a mind talky cat. All right, that's a new one. Hi. No, I just pr- I just show myself to those who I think are good. Oh, oh. well, that's nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you didn't look. Right there, no, Ezra immediately notices that Dagon can't see it, but will not make much of a mention of it. <laughs> But you, you did not give food yet. Are you good? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I take a little morsel of mine and just kind of gingerly place it on the floor next to it. Hmm. Your kindness, while in a good place, was only after I asked. I mean, it, you caught me. I didn't realize you were still hungry. That's what we call a covert contract, and that's not a healthy way to be. One good fortune turns another. Please hold. He, like, fades away into, like, what looks like wisping ash as he fades away. Well, that was weird. Yeah. I, he made it sound like he was gonna... You I, look back down, Eloy. It's patting on your... It's uh, patting on your leg. It has something in its mouth, and it kind of, like, throws it up in front of you. Not throws up, but, like, throws it at your, at your hoof. I'll pick it up. It's a ring. What? It's gone. The cat is gone. The cat is... Ezra, is this your ring? I look the ring. No, it is not your ring. Okay. It is not the ring of free action. However, it is a very, very well-made brass ring... Uh, there is a little bit of an etching of gold. It almost reminds you of what looks like that molten lava creature that was shown on the staff that uh, the Neris were looking for. Well, this isn't my ring, but... Yeah, Dagon, he just got a ring out of nowhere. It's a brass ring. Like It looks really valuable. Yeah, Dagon just looks up from his paper. Very slow news day. Not even a single mention of the attack last night. Oh, that looks pretty. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it, though? A little... Yeah, Frida looks up. She didn't even notice it either. She's just like, oh, I didn't. Uh, when did you receive this? Sorry, guys. We were invited to a, a private party with a cat, and he gave us this ring. Well, he gave uh, Eloy this ring to be specific. Frida's just like, a what? <laughs> I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm, a, I'm going to roll just knowledge, see if any of this makes yeah, sense. Yeah, roll for my knowledge arcana. Well, pretty good roll, despite my negatives. Uh, that is a 17. You're pretty goddamn sure that cats don't magically just give people rings. Look, cats, magic or not, don't typically carry rings around them. Was there anything weird about this cat? Uh, it, it, he Frida had, he had both ring, rings and wings. Yeah. And only we could see him. Okay, that just sounds fucking crazy to you. All right, you're dealing with the fae. Fine, then. Yeah, we Even Frida's just sitting there just like, what the fuck? A cat with wings? Not I think me. I made him mad. He uh, he asked me for food. Apparently, Eloy just gave it to him without asking, and I guess what I did wasn't enough. I mean, if you feed them, they never leave. <laughs> well, he's yeah. gone now. Yeah. You know what? This might be a bad idea. But on the other hand, fuck it. I pop the ring on. Do I feel anything? Does anything happen? Nothing happens... Do we see anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys don't see anything. You watch as Eloy just puts on the ring. Uh, looks good on you. Feel any different? You're not, you, you, you don't seem like the type that's much for jewelry, but it looks good. His skin almost looks like it has some kind of weird sandpaper-like texture crawling up his arm. Do I see that as no, well? No, you do not. Only they see it. Do you, is um, your hand okay? Good. As far as I can tell. You want to roll a uh, perception check? Sure. Uh, 14. You go to look at your hand, it feels heavier, like, it's still movable, but it feels like there's added weight to it. Huh. I mean, yeah, it feels heavier. That might be a good thing for, like, smacking. I pop the ring off. You watch as that sandpaper-like texture, like, leaves his hand as he puts it away. Hmm. Um, excuse me, uh... Waitress, can I can I get a cup of piping hot coffee, please? Yes, uh, just a pot of it, please. Belief. Just Actually, <laughs> iced. It's, it's hot out. <laughs> Belief just comes by. Bring him the ice when I want the hot. 
With I both. I want to test something. With both. All right. Could you, could you put that ring back on? Pop the ring back on. Okay. Just, uh, touch. See if you touch this coffee. If the if the hot if it, if it bothers you. I dip a finger into the hot coffee. In the hot coffee? Yes. Nothing happens. You don't feel the heat. It just feels like water. Are you sure you got the? Hold on. I try it with my other hand. Does it make a difference? Nope. I try. It's hot. Ah! Damn! No, that's hot. I pop the ring off and then try. Oh, fuck me. It's hot. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. This is like that ring you used to have. Look at... All right. Now look at it. Is it glowing? No, it's not glowing. All right. Huh. So I don't think it works exactly like mine did. Although, I... now you could swear that the molten-looking humanoid figure on the insignia of the ring it looks like it's starting to, like, rust away when you take your hand to, when you take it off. Mmm. We might want to be careful with this. It might have just limited uses. The, uh... Yeah, we kind of overused that last one pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Well, now that you've seen that, does anyone want to take a Knowledge Arcana pass? Yeah, take a crack at it. I'll attempt. I'll do okay. Arcana so sucks. Hey, bro, oh, nat 20. Ooh, modified 20. Frida, I mean, got, a, a, Frida got a 24, so. Well, his nat her, 20. Her, well, her 24 is still better than my nat 20, because my nat 20 is a 19. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I, I mean, I know it's an automatic success. but It's an automatic yeah. success, but everyone can kind of start piecing two and two together based on the insignia. I, I got a three on my arcana. It's fine if I didn't. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> don't. You Despite don't. Despite being super sleuth. And <laughs> but Dagon is getting this little bit of information. Like Any, Anytime that I get a natural 20 on an intelligence check, I'm just going to say Griorchik tells me. Yeah. <laughs> Griorchik tells you that uh, it's uh, his body was becoming one as a golem. And then you piece it together. That Stone ring. Skin? Yeah, it's like a stone skin. Ooh. Now that sounds useful. I'm gonna gonna take just like a, a leather and shoelace or whatever and just tie it tie it around my neck for when I need it. Okay. Uh, you don't quite know what the effects are until you actually like take it in combat. Mm -hmm. So for now, it's not identified completely. You know what it's about and you know what it can possibly do, but you don't know the true effects just yet. Gotcha. Well, that's useful. Nice. And all this from a cat we are the only ones who apparently saw. Yeah. But thank you, by the way, if you can still hear me. Oh, you're welcome for the coffee, dear. Like, there's Belief right there standing next to you. Oh, yes. Thank you, too. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. With that, uh, you guys finish up the rest of your meal after this odd encounter with a winged cat that only a few of you have seen. <laughs> hey, if we see him again, I think I'll remember him. <laughs> uh, after an hour has passed, it's probably like 8 o'clock in the morning at this point. Uh, you watch as uh, four, the four kobolds that you saw back on the road, their hoods are down and showing. they now show their uh, faces. They are adorned in what looks like... Uh, it looks like brass chainmail that goes across their faces, but that's also because that's where you saw the burn mark of uh, the one leader. They turn and they turn around, like saying, "I beg your pardon." Like they don't know who's around, but we heard from the sun guard that a few were were tasked to help us out in our mission. I do believe that's I us. Put my hand in the air. Uh, yes, you you found them. Ah, right. good. You watch as four kobolds make their way over to you. Uh, they don't look all that impressive. Like, they just look like... They look like their clothing is competent for basic, like, fighting attire. But they don't look like they're, like, well-suited for combat. These guys just look like cronies. Uh, they stand before you. The, the leader, he, uh, he looks over to you. He goes, oh, well, he, they all... Do you mind if we sit down with you and discuss terms? Sure. Do you need a lift? They both... Like, all four of them just glare at you. Easy now, Dagon. I'm, that, I was trying to be considerate. They are tall no, stools. The one, one, of them, one of them just, like, looks up and holds his finger. I get it. You'll, you'll have to excuse my comrade here. He uh, sometimes isn't sure exactly what's polite versus what can come he, up like, as insulting. Like, the, the leader holds his hand up. 
snaps his snaps his clawed finger, and like almost weirdly, like he kind of just like floats up, and then the others appear on the table. Impressive. Oh, neat. Yes, uh, that is something we've a little a little bit of acrobatic maneuvering we have learned our time when working with our master. I do apologize. My name is Omriz. Huxley. You? Dagon Huxley. My name is Omriz. This is Verz. This is uh, Ixen and Nier. And that's, he's pointing to his other comrades. They don't speak. They, like, you hear them, like, kind of, like, mutter in response, but they all speak Draconic. Well, hello. I kind of, like, nod politely to, to the group. I am, uh, I'm... So do you want me to spell these names out for you guys? <laughs> I mean, I've got... You can spell it out for the audience at home. Yep. I, yeah. I just write things out phonetically. Omriz Same. is U L M R I Z. He is the leader. Was way off. And in Draconic, he actually explains this to you. That means trophy. Hmm. Vers, which is power, V E R S. Got that one right. Exen, which is I X E N, means fire. And Ner, N E R, is spear. Which is kind of fitting because all these boys are red scaled and they all carry uh, little spears with them. Fire spear trophy, powerful (laughs) spear trophy. Hot. (laughs) I like it. Well, all right. What can what can you tell us about the situation? Where 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 would our help be best? You guys have been investigating this longer than than we have. Indeed, we've actually received a ransom note from Almorad this morning. Oh, that's convenient. He he shows you the letter. The letter explains that Almrad has the ch- has uh, the child in a in near outside of Balibar, just a little bit far east of it. There, uh, he is hiding off in a t- in two pillars of tilt of uh, tilted towers. Yeah. Uh, he he is demanding. 50,000 rubies for the return of the child safely. The terms of the transaction is one person with the with the money in tow is to meet him inside the tower where the transaction will take place. There's no chance in hell of carrying 50,000 rubies on one's person. That means you'll need a caravan. We have a case, but we only have our master's life savings. We cannot possibly explain that someone of the Neris doesn't actually have the money to compete with a ransom note. That would be a massive power play. That's fair. However, What's... our master did supply us with something else. He help, he puts up three cases. The one on the le- he he puts his hand clawed hand on the one on the left. This is the real one with ten thousand. This is a fake one with ten thousand, and this one has a trap in it. This one has a rigged magic nullific- uh, nullific- uh, nullifying tra- uh, net that will at least once triggered last for a half hour. How big are these rupees? Like the the rubies that were the rubies themselves? Yeah, they're about the size the size of this hourglass. Okay, so fifty thousand of those. We <laughs> are actually going to need a carriage if it's going to be that big. That'd be quite large. Well, he opens it. You look inside. It looks way deeper than it should be. Okay. Gotcha. Well, I was going to suggest if we could get some sort of caravan and, you know, maybe load those up in a crate and. Then that is say the, prob- the problem with that, sir, is that he is expecting only the four of us. Exactly. So, the rest of us hide in one of the crates inside the thing, and when we're in there, we could pop out and surprise them. While I do like this plan, this smells of just nothing but trap. Yes, that's why we would be setting our trap for their trap. <clears throat> a counter trap for the trap that we're walking ourselves into? I mean, it's obviously a trap on their end, but would they expect us to trap their trap, or do they want us to spring that trap so that we can then deal with said trap? It's called planning, people! We'd have to make sure... <laughs> we'd have to make sure the trappings of our trap doesn't match the... <laughs> trap backwards is part. Oh. Ooh. And if we take that trap apart... If we take part in this trap... <laughs> then truly, look, we will be a part of history. I'll, I'll be. Well, we'll have to cover the trap with a tarp. Mm. I don't know how what many the... tops do you have for this trap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the Sun Guard has told you of the terms of getting a reward for you for doing this, but if it's all the same to you, our only objective is making sure that 
Z- uh, that Zerl is taken back with us safely. We Our- care not of Almorad if he gets away. If we can bring him to justice, that would be great, but we only are in it to get the sun back. Oh, man, that's that's weird, because they told us the opposite. They said that the kidnapper was worth 500 and the boy was only worth 150 Of course they did. Yeah, the- you, you look at, like... Almaraz just like looks at it, just like, oh fuck, of course they did. I mean that that seemed backwards to me, but I I don't know from kidnappings, but if it was me, I'd I'd care more about getting the boy back. The Neris estate is not on good terms with the Sun Guard. They norm they they look to us like creatures like us as their own private militia, so they see us as a sort of com- competition between the guard. Ah, I see. So they're they're more worried about criminals not doing crimes and less about the people the crimes was against. Indeed. I am curious, though, as it appears my plan will not work for you. What was your plan for our involvement? Oh, no, we we came to discuss this information with you to come up with a plan if you were, uh, that if you were assigned to help us. Well, that appears to be what uh, was requested of us. However, we do not possess a caravan. That is our problem. We can purchase one, but as we have said, our our master has given us his entire life savings in this case. The funds we would need to procure a, a caravan are, if we, all, are if we already were, being used I mean, let's staging. be honest, we aren't handing that money over anyway. It is true. The ransom is there just for looks. We feel Amarad would be able to tell if one was a farce, thus why we have the three cases. Well, if we bring all three, he'll know something's amiss if he's looking for one case. <laughs> but, hmm. That's the thing. He does not think he's looking for one case. For all we know, if we do bring this caravan, he could think that the entire caravan is for him. Exactly. He'll think that it's all full of rupees, especially if you have the first crate just full of the shit. <laughs> well, then our question becomes, where can we procure a caravan? I mean... Surely we must, there's there's trade between here and... That is unfortunate that we are not certain ourselves with the lockdown of the entire, with a lockdown of Furfos because of the vampire attack, no one is allowed inside or outside without the Sun Guard's permission. Much less a caravan would be able to go out without permission. Well then plan B would obviously be you enter through the front and while they're dealing with you, we enter through the rear. Eloy, there's, there is someone standing dangerously close right next to you. You turn around, there's a very, what look, there's a very handsome young man, kind of like with, with, uh, with comb back hair as he turns and looks to you. Oh, hello. Uh, hi. You look at him, he has what looks like almost donkey ears coming out the side of his head. Well, that's, I look down. How many legs does he have? Two hand, two legs. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry about what? Oh, I'm sorry. I know. I'm kind of leaning in on your secret, your little secret uh, powwow, right? I'm sorry. I I was here answering. You watch as all the kobolds hold a spear to this kid's throat. He was a satyr boy. I said, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no. I heard back. You're looking for the splendor ball. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. Do you? He's wearing a. This kid's wearing a very large brown overcoat that kind of like almost turns into a poncho going down to his waist. Uh, if you if you roll me a investigation check, you might be able to see something that's inside the cloak. Eleven. Thirteen. I have a fourteen. Fourteen and thirteen? Okay. You can't tell, but you look inside and it looks like the inside of his coat is lined with a bunch of pens and a fuck ton of little books. Seems heavy. Pretty gutsy to just come up on on a conversation, especially with some armed fellows. Got oh, some guts, that, kid. That's everyone in this town. I mean, did you see those Geo Sphinxes outside? They look like they could rip someone apart into pieces. They have. I know. Doesn't that sound great? I should write that down. He opens up his cloak. It's lined to the teeth with moleskin notebooks as he pulls one out and starts writing in it feverishly. Quite the note taker, huh? You got a name? Oh, indeed. Yes. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Yep. <laughs> My name is Vagan Pallet. Vagan, which is V-E-Y-G-I-N. And Pallet is spelled as Pallet. You see, I'm a writer from uh, 
Not from Ibercall. I'm actually from uh, one of the neighboring islands just outside. I came here looking for the Splendor Mall because, well, let's be honest, I think I'm a... Uh, he, like, lo- lifts up his leg and looks at it. He's, like, shaking, like, the fur bristled on the side of his leg. He's like, I, I'm a little bit more equipped with Fey stuff since, you know, I'm kind of part Fey. I wanted to write a story about it, and I was looking for adventures to take me there. But seeing as you guys are going to be the only ones going outside, I figured I'd just travel along with you. I- Frida just looks at this kid just like... Die. He's I, dead. I, <laughs> and Dagon's just sitting there like, more for us. <laughs> I appreciate your, your enthusiasm, but this is I I don't know, buddy. This this might not be exactly what you're looking for. We've kind of got Oh, Poppycock. I'm pretty sure it's what I'm looking for, considering the, you know I'm kind of been stuck here for a few days with no one answering my call. This is my only chance to get out. Please, please, I beg of you. I will make it worth your while if you let me go on your adventure, at least if I can find this thing. How well do you handle yourself in combat? Oh, I got this! He pulls out a Warhammer, but it's, like, bent and looks disheveled. I mean, he might make a serviceable distraction at some point, but I really don't... I mean, do you, do you have any leads on how to actually find the Splendor Mall? Because yeah. that seems to be the big step one that everyone's missing. Oh, yes! I got all kinds of books here that talk about the Fae. Like, pull, opens up his cloak, grabs a handful, and, like, throws it at you. There's, like, multiple notepads sitting in front of you now. Oh, that seems okay. like plenty of information. Do you have any that's useful oh, yeah. that we know will get us somewhere? Oh, well, I found this! Holds up your ring. Wait, hold on a second. Where'd you get that? Oh, I found it out in the middle of the desert. Uh, there was something there that kind of like tried to steal some of my stuff. I mean, a lot of these uh, notebooks are actually all aligned with magical, with all kinds of magical protections to make sure no one reads my notes without my knowing. But of course, I found this and I used a little spell to try and see if I can have this thing. I think it was a mimic. Yeah, I think that was it. It, it was a barrel mimic. I had it throw up something and this came out. Did a screaming ghost happen to be nearby? No. Okay. Yeah, well, that's... Is that something I should know about? No, no, just <laughs> coincidental things. Well, that that's actually my, my, my captain here. That That's his ring. The, the barrel mimic took it from him. So I, you are a tie to the Splendor Maw. I mean, yes, but I, I think we just happened to run into an unlucky barrel mimic. I Are you sure this is a lead to what you're looking for? And... Oh, yes, 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 yes. See, there's a lot of things out here, that the, but the only thing that probably has portals around here is actually inside that Ballybar temple that everyone keeps talking about. But outside, only the Fae know how to do magic such as that. And the Fae and the Splendor Maw, from what I was told, is just a huge concentration of Fae magic that pools together and just forms in the desert. And that's, that's, that's fascinating and, and an amazing adventure, I'm sure, but... We're looking for Zerl, the the, the the dragonborn kid who's been kidnapped. I don't know if this... How these two hands find each other is what I'm asking. I'm sure they don't, but I would love to come along just to make sure. <laughs> like, he's... He... he You can... If I, what would you do at this point? No, I, I can tell he seems very... Uh, he's just like... He, he just persistent, wants... Persistent, let's he's say. He's very persistent. He just wants to get the fuck out of this town so we can go in the desert with people who are well more equipped in combat than he is. You wouldn't happen to know anyone who's looking to sell a caravan or maybe has a way to, to travel in mass, would you? He looks at you with this big dopey smile. I, I assume you don't since you can't leave, and that's what we're looking for. <laughs> well, well, let's not be hasty, friend. I might have a caravan. Go on. If that's what you're looking for, I came here on caravan from Ibercall. I rented, I rented one, but I, as you all know, the entire town is on lockdown. But that doesn't mean a good old little bit of invisibility magic won't get us through. I, I mean, believe if we pass through with these gentlemen here, lockdown shouldn't be an issue. I mean, if you want to do it the boring way. I mean, we've been given, we've been given authority to investigate have this permission. matter. I feel, I feel like we can exercise that. I mean, if you want to do it that way. <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to be invisible, you nobody says you don't act, like. I mean, we're I, also. Going, I mean, I plan to be as soon as combat happens. There you go. We're also going near some so, likely some difficult fellas and some some unfriendly faces. Invisibility on our way in there might not be a bad idea. Bad faces, mean fellas, stuff to write into the memoir. This is perfect. P- professional question. Yeah. You made it sound like you could make the whole caravan invisible. You're right. I could. Okay, that's I, I do a little bit of the invisibility thing, but I 
most I've ever gotten is two people at once. You do magic? Yeah, yeah, with my flute. Sometimes, sometimes with the bagpipes, it's mostly music magic. Ah, I see, okay. See, I was born with it. I mean... I'm what the, I'm what the humans call a sorcerer. Oh, okay, that's what... That's what Red was, right? I believe so. Yes. Yep. And and Ziaka too, I think. Or was she a warlock? I get them all mixed up. She was a warlock. Okay. <laughs> Her patron was the was uh. <laughs> oh fuck. Your pantheon, the, Zito. My Remember pantheon, yeah. the collective uh, yeah. one. The collective one. The collective I one. Yeah. yeah, my pantheon was the collective one. Her entire pantheon. Look, I, I, I'm sorry, but Call I have information. I have 22 pages of information for this point in time, not for fucking two dude, sessions uh, dude, ago. Dude, I'm rolling a murder mystery in my thing. That's a lot of shit to keep track of. Trust me, I know. <laughs> you think Johnny Notetaker here is a little bit of an author insert? <laughs> oh God, so much information. <laughs> well, if you have a means for us to travel, there, there might be an. There might be a situation for us to work around here. So, great. So what's the skinny? He looks over to the kobolds who are just sitting there just like, are you fucking serious? He's got a wagon. Look, we've been looking for a way to get in, and this guy just happens to drop into our lap with it. And you don't find that funny? I'm I've all kinds it, it, of things funny about this boy. Hysterical, actually, but it does lead to our plan pretty well. Here's the thing, if we were already planning on, and I'm saying this frankly now in front of Vagan, if, if we were planning on walking ourselves into a trap, if they're going to send the invite anyway. Oh no, I, I, I would never want to go out into the desert alone outside of the roads. I mean, did you see all those drow slavers? They work for the Scorpion Queen. I'd be snatched up instantly. He would. I mean, he would too. He would. That's, that's what folk keep telling me. I mean... Take no offense, friend, but you seem like a pack mule. It's not even really a snatch-up kind of thing. I feel like they'd just be really friendly to you, and then you'd be kind of lured into it. I think it probably... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if it wasn't your concern for your friends and myself, it would probably be something along the lines of they'd just talk you into it. <laughs> Somewhere along the lines, you'd ask where I was, though, and that's where their whole system would fall apart. I don't know. Last fella who tried to who tried to do the slavery thing got his door kicked down real hard. It, yes, he did. Almarez is just holding his face, just like, are we really going to bring him along? I, I mean, he may he may have a wagon, but nothing about this just seems right. I'm gonna have Almarez actually roll an insight check on he, Vagan. Go ahead. With a nat twenty. But Ve what does he read? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> he he looks over at Vagan. Vagan just looks like a ball of fucking sunshine just like oh boy I get to go out and I finally get to take notes and like Zer like Omarez just looks over him just goes he's just fucking stupid he's just gonna get us in trouble he's he's a liability Captain Ezra was I, I like prefer that, that when I was first on the seas I, I prefer <laughs> that <laughs> does the wishy-washy hand motion <laughs> I prefer the term wild card I prefer the term, he is a resource, and if, if he becomes a problem, he still has a caravan we can use. I he mean, looks, he, the, Omarez looks over at Vagan. Do you require compensation? Oh no, so long as I get to write down in my notes, this is all fine! Dibs on his compensation. <laughs> the guard gave you what your compensation will be. I meant from you. <laughs> <laughs> they assigned us to get to you to assist us. You'll probably have good name with our master, but beyond that, we cannot pay you. Fair enough. It'll probably get you into the Neris estate at most. I look over to <laughs> I look over to Vagan. If if things start looking dicey, can you assure me that you are capable of turning yourself invisible and just getting the hell away from trouble? Gone. He's gone. Perception. Oh God, is he? Oh God. Uh, nine. I'm sure pretty, pretty, pretty gone. I'm sure he's pretty gone. Just, I dream a genie just snap. He's fucking vanished. Just boink. I, I look over at uh, Alvarez. Well, I'm convinced. <laughs> I mean, I'll need to see the caravan first. Make sure that's obviously up to code and everything. He's standing right next to you. See, he gets it. He like oh. throws his arm around you and just like, like <laughs> points, uh, pokes you in this. I do like a playful like. <laughs> Yeah, just like moving his hand. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> no, he's great. 
Hey, question. Actually, two questions. First, are you in fact a secret dragon? No, but could I? I'm gonna call Eli. Okay, no, no just standard thing. Uh, uh, second, you're only the second weird, sometimes invisible thing to, to show up today. You know anything <laughs> about a little cat with wings? A little cat with wings? He like, let yeah. me roll for him. Talks into your head, asks for food. Gave us a ring. Yeah. Can I see this ring? Actually, I suppose I said I had it around my neck. Yeah, it's th this one right here. Yeah, take a look. Hey, Eli, don't just hand it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he gave you a ring. Uh, no, he only gave him gave him the ring. I handed oh, right, it back. Right. Yeah, he, he handed it back to Eloy. Oh, that's right. He has not given the ring of free action back. No. No. Yeah, uh, Vagan is, is still holding on to yeah. that one. And and Ezra will not fight for it. It, it is a finder's keepers in his mind. <laughs> He's, he's like, I've, I've lost vote to it now. You like watch as he like pulls out a pen, does like this weird, like almost like combat rifle spin of the pen, pulls out a notepad, starts writing down and comparing notes with another one. Hmm. Well, that's neat. This has a couple of the symbols of Balibar on it. This is an old piece of Salima uh, magic. He hands it back to you. Yeah. I've, I've been uh, I've been seeing a lot of pictures of that around when I've been walking. Uh, last time I saw the ruins, I've I've dubbed that thing called the Molten Man. I think that turns you into one of them. Oh, so there's there's golemy boys running around. Well, I mean, some of them actually have been walking around guarding the ruins. Hmm. Oh. At least that's what I got from my notes. Do you want to see my notes? Does this? I mean, summarize it if if you would. I've never been the fastest reader. A, a stone man made of lava. Okay, that's neat. Does it turn you into one like, do you think you're one of them and start trudging along with them and patrolling the ruins? Or, or no, can you still think like yourself? I don't know. Let me find out. He puts it on. You guys now watch as his body starts to get like that weird sandpapery texture. Yeah, that's what we saw. You look. Oh, weird. Yeah, that's what mm. happened to me. Hold on. Let me, let me try something. I'm going to roll a knowledge arcana for him with a nat 20 cracks his fists together into a ball and you watch his entire arm turns into what what looks like brick of molten lava <laughs> neat oh. that great great my iced coffee melted <laughs> <laughs> all right well, i still feel like myself i'm moving this arm here you want a high five i do i'd be Ow. careful <laughs> <laughs> How much trust damage oh, did you just take? Yeah. Oh my fuck! Roll initiative. <laughs> no! <laughs> 21. Fuck, I can't believe I'm saying this. Here, go ahead. Gonna need another full rest. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so. No good. He has to do math to yep. figure 20 out. 20 points of fire damage. Great. As your hand now has second degree burns. On the plus side, you'll be able to do that to whoever we use it against. <laughs> Frida, can you do the ouchy thing? Of course, dear. Hold still. Takes the dagger. You watch as Vagan just, just like. Yeah, I was going to say, Vagan, uh, keep a close eye on this. Because this is also something you Ooh, might need to Oh, what's that? Oh. She whips out a dagger. Up the top of your arm. Oh. Down. Turns while it's still in your hand and pokes up. Ah. Plus side, all your nerve endings are probably dead from that fire. <laughs> no, you're feeling all that shit come back. For five minutes, your hand is in absolute agony. But you do receive... <laughs> you will get 10 HP back. Eloy places a cone of silence around himself while he just curses profusely. <laughs> just yo, Sam, do Sam. Dad, name of God, Sarn, if I've seen Bird 30. <laughs> you know, I figured it already hurt real bad, so might as well get it all out of the way now, but... Your first, your second degree burns have now turned into first degree burns. Nope, she made it worse. You, you, <laughs> I had the pain and then she gave me more. <clears throat> Thank you, Frida. I could do it again. She pulls out and uh, say, like I said, every time I want, every time she pulls out a dagger, it's a different blade each time. <laughs> she has it just, th throws just, away the old one. Yeah, throws away the old one. It's like fucking Reaper instead of shotgun. She just like leaves them on the floor. <laughs> and now like every time she pulls out a dagger, it's like a silly straw, the blade shape. <laughs> Do it! In for a penny! Make it happen! One more time. 
Let's blow through all her healing spells real quick. <laughs> 12 HP. All right, back up to full. Thank you, Frida. I'm just going to talk like this for the rest of the night. It's just That was horrifying. And Almrez is just like, no, that was horrifying. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, just don't get hurt. And she won't have to do that to you. So anyway, now all we need are a few crates and we'll be good to go. <laughs> oh, I have that. I have all sorts of things. I have crates full of notes. Do you have any crates that are empty? I mean, I could take them out, but, you know, I have them all organized. Wonderful. We might need to do that. Again, we are just letting you jump in on this adventure with no charge to you, I might add. Mm, I, I guess that's fair, but there was something else I kind of walked around with that I was kind of hoping I would be able to sell around here. Maybe you'd like to buy it. Well, we do have a permit to sell things now. What are we looking for? Splendid. Um, well, you see, I found this... I, apparently, I found this other fey creature that was walking around. Really small thing, really hairy, kind of like dressed up, almost like in a colonial outfit that the Navy kind of wears. And he had a caravan with him as well going into the plateau. Uh, he was trying to sell me a box full of weird miscellaneous goodies that are toys. And I'm like, I don't think these toys are toys that belong to someone from Ibercall. So I thought maybe I'd sell them to kids here. May I see? Yeah. Well, we'd have to go to my... We'd have to go to my uh, caravan for that. Lead the way. I look over to Omris. I I think we may have found our way in. If you we have our way fall. in, but what do you think? Bef he like looks over to he looks over to Vega and he's just like, you sit down and wait till we're finished talking. Okay. <laughs> Pulls up a notepad. Omris is just like, oh my god. Just Meanwhile, <laughs> fucking N Nur, the the last kobold is just sitting there looking at the notepad. And like all of a sudden, like Vagan is giving him a pen, and now he's drawing notes and he's drawing dumb stick figures in there. And Vagan's just having a blast with that. They're like both drawing stuff. He's and fucking Almrez is just like, oh my god. Hey, before you get into that, can, can I get my ring back? Thank you. Oh sure, here you go. Thank you, thank you, just thank you. <laughs> well, we have a way of getting you guys into into the area, unseen. But now, what are we going to do if battle actually ensues? We have to make sure this child is taken out safely. Mm, I have means of transportation. It's a bit loud and flashy, but... Do go on. What do you have? Well, I can carry whoever I touch about 90 feet in any direction, leaving behind me wake and destru uh, destruction. Mm. If that's a bit too scary for you... I don't know what the condition of the boy is at this point in juncture, and the we are and the conditions of the meat is only one of us is allowed to go up there, and so far he only knows of the four of us. Most likely, I will be the one making the transaction, unless you believe it would be a better idea to have one of you. Well, I also have means of causing chaos within a room that could allow people to slip in and out. We may have a device. It's a, it's a one trip, but. We can, we can move people over great distances with these pyramids we have. If we want to get him out of there and just know he is safe, we may have an option for that. Oh, yes. Just leave one here and strap the other one to the lad. Yeah, and just... Bingo bongo, he's gone. A blink, if you will, and he's at the other pyramid. <laughs> Vagan is now, like, cheek to cheek next to you. What? You, back to your notes, please. Just one moment. Okay. If we need to get the boy out in a hurry... That's that is, the quickest that, way. That would be the fastest way. As long way. as you have somebody here to receive him. The only problem there is, once he's gone, he is out of there. And it is up to us to get ourselves out, unless we go with him. Do you think you'd be able to handle yourself against him? Almorad, that is. And if he has anyone else along with him, or has some kind of trap available, can we at least guarantee that you are very comfortable with at least getting the boy out, and no you being stuck inside with combat? Nothing is ever a guarantee. That's what scares us. We want to. He he like holds his he holds his uh chain uh, chain mail up and he shows the scar again. It's now has a fresh claw mark where once his other part of his face is where the flesh used to be. I don't wish to be punished yet again. I can understand that, and we'll do everything we can to get the boy out. But it's a one way trip. Is 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 like I said the only the, the scariest part of this, but. Well, it is a plan, unless anyone else has any other ideas. I will concede to that one. 
Our hope is to get them both out alive, and we'll just do the best we can. I understand that your your primary concern is Zero, while the uh, while the Sun Guard's primary concern was Almirad. We'll we'll do our best to to appease both of you, but with the pyramids, I can guarantee you, Zero will get out of there. But let me ask you this: What does your heart tell you that you would rather do, get the criminal or get the child? We should get the as kid all out four, of there. all four crowbolts are now looking at you as, you, as <laughs> yeah. he says this. Ezra would Ezra would, would respond with, "We should get the kid out of there. I I want us to stop Almarad, but making sure he's out safe is, I think, first and foremost what what we need to do." Then I will concede to whatever plan you have. Then I think the pyramid is our best option for him. I don't love us fighting our way out, but that maybe we can get out of there without that. The pyramid can bring more than one person. It's just difficult. That you probably wouldn't want to drag the criminal out alongside the child. Also true. There are ways of getting him out alive, though. The well, criminal, that is. The child, I'm assuming, you want completely intact. That if, would be the hope, yeah. If these pyramids work the way you say you, they, you say they do, the moment that the child is given to me within the transaction, I will use the pyramid and take us both if it takes more than one person. Yes, and we will make sure that the that the criminals do not come with him and he is out before he can be harmed. Is there a way that this can be activated covertly? Or do I need, what is the what is the protocol? Like, Almrez is now in, like, do you show him the pyramids? Uh, they would currently, I wouldn't have them on my person. Then we don't have them. Yeah. If you don't, if you're not Oh, that's right, them. they would be back on the boat, shit. If you don't carry them. So yeah, I don't I don't carry them. So now that I think about it, so yeah, this plan Wow This doesn't work. The, all four kobolds are disheartened Whoa. by all disheartened by that as yeah. their ears droop down and Almrez is, just looks at you with a bitten bottom of of his lip. Unfortunately that plan doesn't work. We need to travel all the we way. We need back. something more concrete and something now. Well we have our way in and we can fight our way out. That that part was already going to happen. We can cover your escape. I do believe we can cause enough chaos to absolutely do at least that, and at the very least, you can use the caravan as cover if there's anybody firing from afar. Indeed. Not to mention the boy's ability to make it disappear if he can do that with the whole caravan. Hooray, I'm get useful. Through. If, I say, pointing, acting like a stern... I'm not gonna say father, but cool uncle who still has authority. You just watch it's like he you remember that fucking scene from uh, Monsters Inc. where Wizowski, you've done your paperwork, right? That face. <laughs> just the <laughs> face. Now, now question. When I do the invisibility thing, I gotta be touching whoever I'm I'm making invisible. Could you do it from a distance? You can already do more stuff than I can do. I'm just trying to figure out the limitations we're working well, on. Well, I don't have a lot of things to fight with, but I have a lot of I guess you could say utility spells. I'm I'm just thinking if you can just as soon as we catch sight of that of that boy, just pop invisible, run, boy. The only thing that works for me is that I can cast invisibility on anyone within that's within a thirty foot radius of me. That's pretty good. All right. Quick question: This Almarad, how smart do you believe he is? Do you like? Is he an intelligent person? We don't think he's intelligent, however, we do fear of what he is. He is a din. He has command, he, he does have command over fire. And with the boy in his clutches, I'm afraid of him just harming him out of spite. I don't feel he would not, I, do, I don't feel that he wouldn't be above just slicing the boy's neck if it came to it. In his gang that he travels with, do you know of any of his cohorts? That's the thing. He's powerful enough to overtake anyone by himself. I don't know if he has a gang with him, but I would assume he does. So he hasn't he been seen traveling with anyone? He hasn't been... He hasn't... No, that's... Uh, let me roll again for him. I apologize. I'm thinking of outside of shit. <laughs> it's all good. With a nat one... No. Uh, he he looks to you as he just like kind of like shakes his head. I unfortunately was unable to see if he was accompanied by anyone else. It happened so, his attack happened so fast and so quickly that by the time I saw him with the boy, it was too late. I, the only thing I saw of him is that he summoned a phantom steed and ran off. Phantom steed. 
It almost looked like a nightmare, but something more ethereal. So while he may not work with a crew, he is certainly strong enough to be a concern on his own. And also, there's a very real chance that... He does have a crew. Just very, very little interest in the boy's safety. So should should this plan look like it's going even slightly awry, he will not hesitate to harm the kid is what... Yep. Is he, th- our he, current problem. he says that he's not sure if he does have a crew, but it is possible that it'd be stupid of him to do this without extra hands. Yeah. He's, he's not a smart fellow. He's a very brash fellow, but working alone in a heist like this would be suicide doing it by yourself. Well, if he does have a crew, then I do have a means to incite some form of chaos, at least. Well, that'll be helpful. And hopefully maybe we can find someone who, you know, can help with this chaos and would know something about his whereabouts, causing the chaos to come to him. And if you need us to... Uh, and. If it comes down to combat, we are very capable if we fight as one. He looks to the four, he looks to the three other companions of his. I would say your best objective would probably be keep the child safe. We will do just that. All right. Then our plan is we go in with the caravan. Once we have an assessment on his actual base, figuring out and getting us in there, getting the boy to you, you being invisible and just protecting the boy and just getting him out of there while we work the rest of the way out. Best case scenario, he sends somebody into the caravan to check the crates and when he pops open ours, maybe we can surprise the one that's checking. And Who knows if they're wearing some form of outfit, one of us can slip into it. And If we feel the plan needs to deviate, we will try to work on our best... On our best, uh, I, on our best motives of that. Should In, should things go awry, my primary goal will be getting the child to you and you getting away. Indeed. So long as we can understand that, no matter where this plan falls apart, understand that that's where I will be going. <laughs> if you ask me, this in, this whole thing just feels like sort of shifty deal in trying to at least get some kind of body for the Scorpion Queen. It feels like we've gotten a we've got a sun guard that is spread very thin and a very big problem that still needs attention. That's that's the feeling I'm getting. And very well, but as for him, he looks over to Vagan. Are you staying out of this once we once we are done with your transport? He like shakes his head up and down. Like yeah, I'm not going into combat. No siree. Look at this thing. It doesn't even work. It like cracks. It like falls over. I'd highly recommend anything of value you have in that caravan. You make sure it's stored somewhere before this plan goes into action because I will gladly hold on to anything of value for you. There you go. A very trustable set of hands should you need it because there's a very real chance that this caravan is traveling headfirst into danger. Okay, here you go. He hands you the the war hammer. Roll a strength check. Is this a those of pure heart kind of thing? <laughs> uh, nat 20, though. Oh, Damn, nice. this this is like going good for me. Holy moly. No, no, oh. no. Not down. Whoop. Excuse me, what? You gonna put your arm down, Dang? I. Can I pull my arm down with a nat 20? With a nat 20, you get halfway, but then it goes back up again. Oh, that! See, I imbued my... I imbue all of my possessions with wild magic. Every time someone who isn't me touches it, something different happens. That's impressive. If I let go, is it just going to... Oh. Uh, you could try. It's his hammer. <clears throat> I'd suggest not standing directly under it when you let go. Yeah, I'm standing a bit to the side. I hold it to where, like, nobody is and just let go. Did you hear that? I head over to the hammer and investigate where it fell. Yeah, so I, I'm, it's right ca- next to me. There is cat hair under the hammer. My investigation was an 18 Va- also. Va- Va- can, you, can you lift that up? Oh, okay. sure. He lifts it up. You see a flattened tail as like the rest of the cat appears and looks at you. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. Are you all right? It was him. Just pointing at Dagon. It didn't do anything when he grabbed it. <laughs> The cat looks over. The cat looks at all three of you, puts its paw up to its neck, disappears. Did you see that? I'm going to call him Sheshi. Nope. Roll a perception check. (laughs) 
I can see what it's circling on. Yeah, uh, that is a. Hold on, I actually have advantage or not advantage, but that doesn't matter. It's a seven. Seven. <laughs> you saw nothing. I would have looked at the like. Does that just mean that my eyes did not see the animal? You didn't see the animal. You saw the hair. So it smashed something, but you didn't see the rest of what it smashed. Okay. The cat is choosing to be visible to specific people also. Yes. So yeah. it, not being able to see it even. even oh, I saw the cat, Vagan says. Just like, I saw it. Yeah, that's a fey creature. I figured. Ow, this ring's hot. Ow! Careful. Oh, wait, he handed you the yeah, ring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you feel it burn on your chest. Oh. Is that normal? It looks like it's like undulating, almost like it's bubbling. Yeah, that 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 does not look comfortable. I'm glad I was not wearing that when that happened. You, you, the cat is now sitting in between the both of you. You hear, <laughs> say you're sorry. I'm, I'm I mean, sorry, cat. Say sorry, dum dums. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I picture now. <laughs> I mean, I already said it once, but I'll say it again. I'm sorry that happened to you. Good. Slap him. Me? Mm -hmm. One of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would rather not. More iced coffee, please. You watch. Hey, Dagon, don't mind this. It starts huh? bubbling even more. <laughs> Dagon, don't mind this. Huh? I give him a quick slap. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. Do you accept it? <laughs> I, I, I would have been blindsided. <laughs> okay. Roll a 1d4. All right. Uh, there it is. Two. <laughs> At half, so one. <laughs> Sorry, a cat the, told me you, to do it. You now watch as the thing stops bubbling and returns to its original form. Okay, sorry, that was an experiment. I had to make sure that you, worked. You hear the cat purr and then disappear. No, I don't need that second glass of coffee anymore, at least. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fake trickster about and uh, goofing with us. <laughs> yeah, I saw it too. It was mad. Boy, I was, I was all excited about my exciting new And ring. that's why I don't want to put you guys in the crates, because who knows what will happen if you go inside of them. It does sound scary. Really sounds like my plan just does not seem to be in the cards for <laughs> oh, some no, reason. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you got the caravan part right, though. No, we got the caravan part, <laughs> but I do have something else for you. Please. I have the barrel. Wait a minute. You. I took the barrel. Yes, because that makes much more sense than a crate. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump I, in the mouth. I definitely barrel. don't want to get in that, because that... Oh, no, I bought some new ones. This one's... Uh, I have one that's full of grapes, another one that's full of water. Oh, okay, so these are not the barrels that, you know... Not the people. mimic barrel. Oh, no, I do have that oh. one. I just don't remember which one it is. Mm. Oh, okay. So we're back to this again. We'll just keep <laughs> stabbing them until we get it right. <laughs> So, there's a little bit of added extra danger to this. He does have <laughs> barrels for you guys to go into. You could either choose to go inside the magic crate, you could go inside one of the barrels, but also one of the barrels might be the mimic. One of these switches burns down the house, and it changes <laughs> every day! <laughs> I'm going to float this out there. Uh, th there's a gentleman whose uh, pet just died recently. He has a bunch of crates in his backyard. <laughs> Maybe we could just go buy an empty crate! <laughs> If you wanna. That sounds wonderful. Seems safe. We should also mark that mimic one at some point. I mean, if you wanna. Where, where's the fun in that? So you, you, you're not sure which one the mimic barrel is, but it's one of these, like, three? Oh, I have six of them in the back of my caravan. Six so of one them? of the six. All right, let's mark those six as don't get in here barrels. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go buy some fresh... Once, once again, <laughs> Alrez is looking at you just like, are you fucking serious? I look to Alrez. This is how things with us always go. You're gonna have to get used to it. I hope this child lives. I swear to God. Don't worry. They tend if, to. <laughs> if it's one thing I can say is that no man has crossed blades with the wraith of Ibercall and lived. So at least you got that on your side. But hold still, dear. As fucking as uh, as Frida looks at the little like bruise on your face, <laughs> slap. She like she like face. she like takes one of her clawed fingers and pokes you in the cheek with the with the S <laughs> little blood trickle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we'll take a break here. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Welcome nice. back to the table. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to the table. We got Haribos. Haribo, you want to sponsor us? We will take it any day of the week. <laughs> oh, I can feel my teeth screaming at me as we speak. Are these all like two-headed snakes, or are they just like fused? No, it's just two snakes. It's twin snakes. 
You have one oh. sweet and one sour. Oh. Oh, that's what that tastes like. I'm still in a dream, snake eater. <laughs> oh. wow, 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 wow. I tested them too. I pulled them apart. It's not just a sweet and sour taste. One of each pair is sweet and mm. one is sour. Very good. Yeah. Alrighty. Time to get food out of my mouth and begin. <laughs> no, we're good. We are. We are live. We are going. Yeah, yeah the this GM. The, the GM archive. who needs to talk. All right, well, I've wrapped our hair off. <laughs> oh, we're going to get in that crate, and then we're going to get in the I've always been. Look, if there's one thing I've learned from reading YouTube comments, it's that people love it when you chew into the microphone. Absolutely. Directly in there. The crunchier, yep. the better. Oh, yeah. Crazy about it. <laughs> Bodacious. <laughs> All right. Belief will give you guys a crate. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> Enough to fit you... Uh, to fit Ezra, uh, Dagon, and Frida. Eloy. Eloy, we're going to have to disguise you as something <laughs> that's pulling the carts. <laughs> I don't know. We'll put you, just, you just watch as, as uh, Vagan just kind of like rolls his sleeves up. That might be a job for me. What kind of pack mule would you like to be? There are kinds? Yeah. There's all kinds of beasts of burden I can turn you into. Do people ever use giraffes as beasts of burden? The hell's a giraffe? That's a very good question. <laughs> I'm not sure if I know. I don't think I do. It's it's got like a real long neck, but its body is a raft. <laughs> <laughs> so you do know. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> No, that wouldn't make much sense on land. I, I guess I'll just be just just the regular kind, like a donkey, but without the human part on top. Ah, uh, that's 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 too common. Let me look at my notes real quick. I have an idea of what to turn you into. I mean, you could turn him into a camel. There are plenty of those around here, and that would be, you know, not look out of the ordinary. You watch, see, like he's about to lift his hands up. He just looks at you. Oh, if you want to be boring, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm open to suggestions. There's, I'm just there's telling boring, you. Boring, and then there's. You know, not putting us at unnecessary risk when we're rescuing just like a screams to the child. back of the back of the caravan. <laughs> Practical. <laughs> That's a word. That's a word for it. Yes. Speaking of question, is this gonna be a for real turning me into thing or just illusion in me? Nah, it's just an illusion. Okay, good. That's I like that better. That means you do have to carry the cart, though. <laughs> 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 Let me roll a one d six to see what you turn into. What will you become? Well, shit. You guys watch as Eloy starts to blur, like, in and out of existence. And then, like, it's like the entire, like, front part of his body is, like, motion blurring and kind of deforming. You don't feel anything. You're just standing there just completely fine. Everyone else now watches as Eloy becomes a griffin. I don't... Are we sure this won't stand out? <laughs> I mean, it certainly does look like this person has a lot of money. They're putting is, a griffin on their caravan. I guess that's true. We do have a couple of the nearest estates, so this actually would put together. Hey, there you are. All right. I'll, I'll take your word for it, then. I'm, I'm not a local here. You are. So you are a griffin, so let me explain what kind of griffin you are. All right. His name's Peter, and... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you got to the joke before I did! Got it. <laughs> Fuck! Shame. <Shazam. laughs> I, look, I, I don't fucking care. I don't accept that. You know what? No. Okay. So Peter Griffin's pulling a No, 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 no. <laughs> so the bird version of you is a bearded vulture. All right. And the lion half of you just looks like a straight-up lion. All right. Straightforward. All right, so just I just got to get used to how my my part. Oh no, you you just moving by yourself, like you're moving just fine. Everyone else is watching as the Griffin is kind of like positioning itself to stand up straight. This looks almost flawless. So like when I flap my arms, does it look like I'm flapping wings? And that one on perception, so I'm not gonna see through this illusion. Where'd he go? <laughs> where, where, what what happened to Eloy? What? It's magical beast. It's just. Such majesty. It sings to me. I mean, for that matter, can you all understand ah, me there when I is. talk? I hear him now. <laughs> you can hear him talk, yes. 
Okay, so I should I should refrain from talking when folks who's not in on it are around. Got it. <laughs> just keeps looking at it, just <laughs> mystified. Where did Eloy go? <laughs> he just fucking up and vanished, and then you just see Vega just look at you. Magic. I gotta hand it to you. you you're not selling. You're, you're not selling yourself. A, or you're not overselling yourself. Quite, quite the transformation here. He like holds up his finger, and you watch a little zap come out. <laughs> yes, all right. I, 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 I Is there anything got... else you guys need to do or want to do before you head out into the desert? Uh, I again emphasize to uh, to uh, to Vagan that there's a very real chance that we may be attacked and this caravan may be destroyed. If there's anything he personally finds valuable in it, may want to take it away. Oh, he did. He did that as is. He okay. he put. He said he had like a barrel of supplies of children's toys that he put away. <laughs> Uh, he put all of his food and everything. He still left the six barrels in there, so one of these barrels in this in this <laughs> cart... Somewhere in this caravan is a mimic who has already yep. stolen a ring the crate, me. Uh, the crate you guys got from, uh, from Belith, you are inside that. The other crate is next to it, the one that apparently if someone else touches it that isn't vegan, will do something magical and okay. random. It's stupid. Thagon just keeps reading the newspaper. <laughs> All right, so with that, uh, I need everyone to roll me a survival check. Uh, is this for dehydration or heat? Heat, yes. Okay, What? Uh, there was one thing I was going to do. Prestidigitation has an effect that lasts for one hour. I was going to cause like a gust of wind to be circling through here to kind of cool us down. Okay, that will help a little bit, but still, the, the effects of this are going to be a little bit harsh. Cool. Remember when you guys first walked out, the reason why you were wearing protection and everyone said, no, you want protection because the sun is so fucking disastrous here that something in this desert is causing heat to be way more than There it is. is some supernatural heat going on somewhere. Yeah. I got a modified 20. All right. A, uh, a 22 for me. Seven. You roll for Frida. Oh, wait, 21, sorry. Frida didn't do as hot as you did as well. Let me roll for Vagan. Vagan looks like a puddle. <laughs> oh, boy, this sucks! <laughs> he wanted to get out. <laughs> yep. Uh, let me go for Olmrez and his crew. Oh, they're taking it like champs. So... Dagon brought, a, or Dagon brought a little doggy bag of scorpion with him. <laughs> They're really good. Uh -huh. It's a local treat. It's, it's a acquired taste. Unfortunately, Vagan, Eloy, and Frida are taking a point of exhaustion. That means that anything skill check-wise takes a negative. Uh, you have to take a disadvantage for the rest of the day. Uh, or at least, until, at least until a short rest. Or some sort of equivalent, like healing or whatever. Yeah. Wait, no, I can't. I cannot eat twin snake while DMing. That's bad. <laughs> Fuck. If we were doing this I in our basement, myself. hanging out amongst ourselves, sure. Yep. Brother! But with a microphone in your face. It's been too long! <laughs> These twin snakes, they're too good. Oh, oh, my. Guys, okay, I did not think this through when I, when I it, offered to pull the cart. Ezra, you turn, you watch as, like, the griffin looks haggard and looks at you. <laughs> oh, this magical monster seems to be having a problem, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only Eloy were here, he could yeah. make him feel better. <laughs> Eloy would probably know what to do. Frida just <laughs> looks over to Dagon, just like, don't say anything. I'm, I'm not. No worries. Are we sure? Guys, I don't know, like, the diet of a griffin. Does it need more water? <laughs> we do have some rations of water. It won't help being in this heat for too long, but it can at least assist. Uh... So I'm going to say that everyone, you all have canteens, yes? Yeah, at least I have, uh, I have it written down. I, I have, have it a water set skin. that, uh, yeah, so you guys have, a, everyone has a water skin. How this works is uh, one swig is a quarter of it. So you have four, you have four hits of water regularly. Okay. Unfortunately for Ezra, uh, no, I'm sorry, not Ezra. Uh, Eloy. Eloy, Frida, and Vagan, they took half that. So you are at 50% on this water. <laughs> so Ezra just watches as the griffin like pops out of canteen out of nowhere. Oh, it's a resourceful creature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, after like an hour or so, it's now 
11 o'clock, almost 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the sun is at its primest, like, dead center. If you look up, it's almost, like, suicidal to do just that. You're just like, oh, no, that's a bad idea. If you look up, you'll regret it. Luckily, yeah. we're in a crate, so the sun isn't as much of an issue. <laughs> Still hot in here, hey. though. Hey! 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 I swear to God, if that's that fucking bird, I will shoot it. <laughs> well, you'd have to look outside. I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm in a crate. We're in a crate. <laughs> we're hiding. Do I hear the hay? Yep. Can I see where it's coming from? Yep, you look off into the distance, roll a perception check. What do your griffin eyes see? <laughs> 17. <laughs> there looks like there's a very big lone bird on top of a cactus. It, can I tell if it's the same bird from before? Not with the mirage that's going on right now, but you do hear. Hey! 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 What's your problem? Oh, you talk too? Cool. Can you die already? No, no, I can't. I'm cursed to never die, to wander the earth in a state of thirst and discomfort and never, ever die. So I'm sorry, you are shit out of luck. Can I have some of your flesh then? No! Why not? Because the, the, the curse will get passed on to you, and you'll hate it. Roll a persuasion check. Because it's in the curses do suck. Nine. Buddy, I'm already this way because of one. What's another one gonna do? <laughs> Trying to whisper to Ve Vegan without giving away my position. Can you, like, do anything about him? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I don't know. It's a talking bird. <laughs> it seems like something you could just magic away. <sighs> I tried to magically kill it. It <laughs> didn't take. <laughs> I mean... I, I guess I can try something. Hold on. Hey, Featherbrain! Fuck you! Dissonant whispers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, yeah, okay, that's something. Nat 20. All right. Bird don't care. <laughs> no, no, that was too... Dissonant whispers is a save. Oh, that's right, it's a save, save. <laughs> so then he saves really well. Mm. Yeah, I know, he still saves really well. Fuck you too, man! I don't, I don't All right. think that worked. All right, buddy, I'm gonna level with you. We're, we're, on, we're on sort of a stealth mission here. And when we're done, there's gonna be a whole lot of bodies. But only if we get there stealthy-like. If somebody tips anybody off, we just turn around and go home, and there's no bodies for anybody. Persuasion check with advantage. That's our evil. Well, so that means it it, it it evens itself out, so only one roll. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, 23. 23? <gasps> hmm. You're saying there's going to be a bloodbath. I, seems very possible. As long as, again, as long as we get there without nobody getting tipped off. You hear the flap of wings as it now sits on top of your caravan. All right. No, that, that scans. That tracks. <laughs> As long as I get a body to eat, I'll keep quiet for now. I wonder what vulture tastes like. <laughs> well, you've... It's like Almrez is looking at you. Why do you keep adding these weird things to this mission? Why do you keep talking to a box? We all have problems. <laughs> no, we... <laughs> Us. No, because again, uh, remember the guys, they're on they're on ostrich back. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah. Like going alongside the caravan. He's just saying this to the to the sky, more or less. He's like say, no, he's saying that to Eloy, knowing that he's a griffin. <laughs> Look, man, it it just seems easier than killing something else today. All right, what do you want from me? I'm tired. <laughs> Alright, so as you guys continue down the path. Uh, you finally get off the path and you now start heading into upslopes of the desert. Uh, you pass by what looks like a huge ziggurat off to the side. Of course, we're not getting much of a view, but <laughs> if you look through the slats of the box. Well, I mean, maybe. you don't have to be inside just yet. You don't have to be in the crate just yet. Man, it keeps me out of the sun. We have no idea. You're still in the caravan. What spies oh, okay. bound? Yeah, like you're still in the caravan. Like, you don't have to be in the crate just yet. Uh, you pass by. Uh, this large ziggurat that has these two protruding, almost like half circles coming out the side of it. This thing almost dwarfs the entire horizon before you. Dagon, if you want to roll a knowledge history with advantage, you can. 
I'm gonna need that advantage because that's an unnatural zero. Uh, nine. Hey, you know what this big thing is? Uh, it's a. Um, you haven't been here in quite some time. It's you... uh, it's stairway to the top pot. <laughs> oh. You're, right. you're piecing it together. You kind of, st- unless anyone else wants to roll. I am fairly sure I there is no logical you don't get, reason you don't get for an advan- Ezra to know. Well, well, no, no, there is. Okay. There is. Contextual hi- clues, I guess. Said history? Yes. Four? <laughs> so I don't. See, so yeah, I look, back in the old days, they would walk up to the top there, and they'd be like, wow, look at all this desert, and then they'd walk back down. Okay, so it's like a... a Frida like knows a, jack shit. Like a lighthouse. <laughs> I Thank just God Vagan's here. We're That's all- Bally Bar, you idiots! Uh, I mean, if you just want, to, like, yeah, but it's stairs. Well, that's what it's called. Yes, it's Balabar. It means stairs to that. Ah, oh, all right. All the people who have been paying attention to the lore in chat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I definitely know that. Oh, no, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fuck. This is the GM's worst nightmare. <laughs> Spend fucking 12 hours <laughs> writing this shit. You get threes on rolls, and it's like, oh, it's it's stairway place. Fuck! Just saying, you see it stacks up like that? Yeah. <laughs> the giants of yore used to use it for an exercise. Fascinating. <laughs> There's all this room you in the You see a desert. molten lava man going up. Drago! <laughs> see? Like that. <laughs> uh, Bally Bar, that sounds like where we're... Like, you're not. You're not supposed to meet up here. You're supposed to meet up around there. You're mm. again. Uh, the ransom note described that you need to find tilted towers that are crossing each other. Where we dropping, fam? Yeah, where we dropping, fam? Where we dropping this kid? <laughs> uh, tilted. T- uh, there are two tilted towers that are crossed. They look like uh, there's a brass cobblestone path that's covered in the sand. That's okay. when you know you're at your destination. All right. So I need everyone to roll a perception check as you pass by Balabar. You'll find the money under a giant W. Uh, Perception, that is a 22. 23. 21. Hey. Wow. All right. As you guys pass, uh, you pass by Balabar. You are now uh, nearing a small, like, little... Uh, a small little cliffside that almost leads further down into the valley. There's a little bit of a slope, so you can go down that way perfectly fine. However, Dagon uh, looks off to the side and sees that underneath the cliffside, it almost looked like there was some kind of uh, can- like candle that was sticking up out of the ground, almost like a pillar where you could place fire into, and what could have been the mouth of some kind of opening underneath the uh, cliffside. It's not very far down. Like, you can get off You can get off the wagon and, like, just take a five-minute walk to go around just to see what's underneath this cliffside if you choose to. Anybody else see that over there? It's a uh, mouth to some form of cave, and there's that little candelabra-looking thing sticking up out of the f- ground. I mean, there might be something of value there. Do you, I look over to Vagan. Do you know where this is? No. Well, keep a note of it, I suppose. I mean, it's a I've lit- been writing a map this whole time. He holds it up to you. He's like, he's drawn a map halfway at this point. That's actually yeah. very impressive. Nice. It's a good skill you got there, kid. You should sell your maps. I mean, I have at some points. Uh, I I have sold to this uh, adventuring company somewhere up to the north once or twice before, but uh, they kind of don't. I, I kind of don't want to work for them so much as I just want to make sure I'm writing down information, because I don't want to give all my books away to anyone for free. I kind of have my own little reasons for keeping on to these notes. Hey, man, if you've got an important resource, it makes, sh- makes sense to not just hand it out to everybody who asks. Can I look at that map, though, real quick? Oh, sure, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> ah, you got me. See, there you there go. You I'm go. just testing he, he, like, holds it up to you, at least. All right, so I, I look at this map, and I try to gauge... It has this map just, he's just been filling it out as we've gone? So yeah. Okay. Um, he's, he has like a comprehensive uh, 
a map of like from Ibercall to uh, Furfos and then into the plateau and another path that leads outside of the map. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing written to the north, which is where you guys seem to be going on this part of the map. Okay. All right, so we can stay on this main line here and head straight towards where we're going, or we can quest off to the side and figure out what this is. Right. Honestly, I feel like we should probably be heading towards our meeting place. I'm curious about what's there, but it might be something we can hit on our way back. Like, again, when, when, when I'm looking at it, does it look like it's disappearing or is no, it no, 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 no? It doesn't look like it's disappearing. It looks like it's just there. Like it's a lip to the inside of a cave. It, 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 the only thing you can think of that this possibly would be a good reason to stop here is to give those who look like they're having heat stroke a chance to get some rest. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Ezra goes, Eloy, what do you think? I, man, I am all in favor of shade right now. Ah, oh, well. If our griffin shows up looking like it's about to keel over, probably wouldn't be great for us, especially if a fight does break out. We will grant you a short rest. That is all Omra says. <laughs> You can feel free to move on ahead. I'm thanks, <laughs> thanks, buddy. If you want, yeah. If you want to scout ahead and make sure that the the road's clear, if you feel like you're just, you know, twiddling your thumbs while you're here, feel free to do that. We will return in an hour. Unless like you would like us to, unless you would like us to guard the post here. We again, we can search, but we feel it would be better if we at least make sure that you lot are taken to this location unscathed. No, that's fair. I mean, we've, we've got enough people around here that we should be safe you, in the the immediate vicinity if you want to just take a look around things. I think how about that's this? You, you do whatever you feel is best. We'd rather not split up. We'll stay here for a few moments. Works for me. You guys turn around uh, and kind of like lead yourself over towards that uh, open mouth was. You look, uh, you, you turn the corner. It looks like the top of a skull like a top of a, a skull's mouth and the bottom of a skull's mouth covering what looks like the entryway to a door that's overlooking, uh, that the cave is overlooking. So there is shade, you can sit inside of it, but it looks like it's, it looks like you're entering in through a skull's mouth that's been etched into the stone. I'm back in my Dagon of, a, Dagon of Arabia gear here. Uh, <laughs> the thing that you mentioned that looked like it held fire it's uh, still there. It's on the outside of it. Okay. Are they just like little parapets that are like you know shoulder height or yes. how tall? Okay. Hmm. They have they have uh, little bowls about probably about you could fit your arm inside of them pretty much. I'm gonna, like, does it look like there's any fuel within them? There is no oil in the one on the left. However, there is one on the right. Is it enough that if I decided to scoop some, I could pour some into the other, or is it just like it looks like this is one dose? It looks like one dose. Okay. Hmm. It doesn't look like it's been used in quite some time, however. Really interesting decorating choice, as I say, pointing at the skull. I have a theory. Do any of you have uh, some lantern oil on you? Uh, actually, yeah, I do. I just have a bit. I, I pour some in the other that looks like it's an equitable amount to what was in the previous the, one. The bowl is now filled with lamp oil. All right. And I use prestidigitation to light each of them. You set them ablaze. They create a green flame inside both of the bowls. Nothing happens. Just green flame. Pretty. Hmm. Well, now we have a nice little light here if anyone needs it. The, ostr uh, the ostriches are now sitting inside the shade, getting a little bit of rest. Eloy, you poor bastard. You're just like, <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Ugh. Vagan is now taking this time to start examining the door that this thing is, uh, the, the cave now enters towards. It's closed. It's a stone door, but you can't open it. There's no, like, lift here, but it looks like it's supposed to be a door. I'm going to examine this door. Yeah, I'm going to investigate this area, see if there's any, like, writing on the walls or anything. Specifically, anything that might be illuminated by this green flame. Uh, got a 13 in investigation. Mine was only a nine. 13 in an investigation. There's something written here, but you can't make it out. But it does look like it's fading. Like, it, it's very hard to read. It almost looks like it's flickering away. Like in the light of the flame? The light is too far away for you to guess. But at this point, you're looking at the wording on the door. And it's like flickering in and out. It's written in Celestial. Hmm. 
but I can't quite make it out just you because You can't it's quite so... make it out. If it were a little darker, maybe. Is there any way we can cast some shade this way? Uh, Frida actually says, yes, I can do so. I can do such a thing. She like holds her hand up, takes her, uh, takes her fingers and claws down a little bit, and you watch as what should be blood pulls into this weird little like blob of darkness and spreads out, and it's now like magically dark. The light from the fire doesn't look like it's complete. It's doing its job because of this is a magical flame. This is a magical flame, and this is a magical darkness. However, the moment that the darkness creeps in. The, the light that was flickering from the fire actually got a little bit clearer, but the moment the darkness covered the entire area, it vanished. Okay, so for a second it was working, but then... Yep. ...got too dark. If I were to use my light cantrip to cancel out this darkness, um, perhaps standing at the right distance, we might be able to get something. So I use the cantrip light, which I... Pretty sure magical light is the only way to cancel out darkness. So that, I think that's the rule for that spell. I mean, if she's she's noticing that you're doing this to like you know, just try to, to just try to get out. just try to get shadows in the right. Yeah. Area. So like now there's you and Frida kind of like trying to like balance. find the perfect balance between light and dark. We're standing in proper triangles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, y it's still like you return when the light magic appears. It returns to when. Like the first time you saw the uh, the wording on the door, it returns to the same kind of flickering effect. Shit. I try standing like further from the door when it disappears. The more you step away. Crap. <laughs> now, perhaps the magical darkness, darkness isn't if, the answer. If you let the darkness complete itself, it returns to that you almost caught it, but then blobs away in the darkness. Can, effect. I, can I try to roll a perception check just to see if I catch it, like while it's, or at least part of it? Uh. Sure, I will allow you to roll me an investigation check with disadvantage. All right. That's not something I'm good at. Damn disadvantage. That was a nat 20. That's not terrible. 14? Wait, no, 15. Sorry, I have proficiency and advantage. That's fine. Let me just double check my notes real quick. I apologize. I want to make sure I'm getting this correct. No worries. Ah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Some type of riddle. This doesn't work. I've got my electrical lockpick. Maybe it's a <laughs> maybe it's a mechanical device. Maybe if we just break the door. That'd be fucking weird. <laughs> hey man, always ready for anything. Okay. Uh, you catch one word. All right. Uh, you catch in Celestial the word tomb. Hmm. Well, if we come back here at night, we might be able to make out a bit more of this. As far as I'm aware, this is just a burial site for something. Hmm. I'm going to roll a knowledge check for Frida and Vagan. Frida does not give a fuck. Vegan. They're already dead. They can't feel pain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they can't feel pain. He already. If it's a tomb, they already sleep in eternal peace. Meanwhile, Vegan's just like, man, to hell with that. Here, you might be doing it wrong. Hold on a second. He like pulls out a, a torch, goes over to the, uh, goes over to the the candle, picks up the flame, moves over with it. It starts to read clear as day. Well, I mean, that's another way to do it, <laughs> I suppose. Oh. oh, that actually wasn't what I was thinking. I just thought you couldn't see that good. Well, what does it say? I can't read Celestial. Um, it says... In investigation with advantage. But I'm just reading. <laughs> it's hey, still kind of chipped away from time. Gotcha. Still an old-ass door. Well, that's pretty good. 17. 15 on the die. All right. <laughs> I'll have Tomb a look. of... Tomb of Jag Kal. May he forever bathe the land in his light. Jag Kal. Does that name resonate with Dagon at all? Roll, roll. a history check. 
Gonna assume a five's not doing it. Nah, unfortunately. Was was that the name of the first call? I know we I know we heard no, that. That, one. that was oh, Balabar, yeah. and that's look. Oh, I didn't Balibar, pay yeah. much attention in orphan school. Well, I don't have any notes on this man, but if it's anything, the family must be huge because if Balibar was the first one, and that was like almost five hundred years ago. Oh, trust ago, me, there are like a lot of the sons. Yes. I never heard of this one before. He's like he's like Vegan's flipping through his notes, and he's not getting anything. Well, whatever's in there is probably very valuable. And I have no respect for my ancestors. <laughs> I have no respect for them either. I want to get rich. High five. High five. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we don't get rich rescuing this kid, we know where to look. Oh, don't worry. I'm way ahead of you. Sorry. Sorry, chat. Just Unfortunately, this doesn't give us <laughs> any more. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> Unfortunately, this doesn't give us any more of a clue as to how to get into here. Hmm. Unfortunately, no. Is there nothing else on here? Is there anything around? I hold my hand out for the torch. Well, Maybe. you you got the yeah. He hands you the torch. I start looking around to see if there's any more things that like glow in its light. Investigation check for everyone. Fourteen for me. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, fourteen and what'd you get? And what did I get? Four. <laughs> yeah, he's Eloy's, he's, he's, Eloy's sleepy. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And poor Frida, unfortunately, because of the exhaustion, she's rolling bad. You, you folks should just rest up while we look around, I think. Let me roll for Vagan. Vagan is too spazzy to, to Could pinpoint. Could it be this? Or maybe this? Huh? I can't read any of this. What's going on? <laughs> uh, you guys uh, find some pictures up on the ceiling. Uh, it it like the What almost looks like... A sun setting over a skull. Well, I think if the sun sets it's over the skull, half like half of the sun is eclipsed by the picture of the skull. So if we come here at the proper time when the sun is going down over the skull itself, and it looks like oh, they want it to look like a goddamn crown. Of course they do. Those I, fucking pawns of. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look over to Vagan. You've made a bunch of maps, so you probably have a, somewhat of an idea of uh, you know. Positioning and you know, it's just like, he like you like look over. He's got one of his barrels out. He slaps it. This baby can fit all the maps. <laughs> so, or maybe it's a mimic. I don't know. <laughs> you have any sort of idea based on where the sun is now and where this tomb is? How much time we have between when this might be possible? Based on just the knowledge of time, <laughs> it's probably a few hours. So survival guessing. check. Nat 20 again tonight. Jesus. Right, well, I'll give Vegan that to you. I got a pretty I good a, roll, too. I had a 13. 13? You're all able to surmise that the sun, uh, the sun, unless you came here during the morning, it, it would look like a crown was here. Okay. So so, the, so, the, so we want to be here at dawn. Yes. Yeah. The okay. rising sun is how this works, not the falling. Okay. Falling, the sun would have went the other way. Gotcha. Well... If we want to make a, take a morning trip back here, we might be able to see what's inside these doors. At the moment, are we closer? Uh, you are closer to, to Balabar than you are. Well, to no, I mean, are we closer to Furfos or are we closer to Ibercall? You are closer to Furfos at this point. Okay. So if you return to Furfos and make a trip back here, that would be an easier time than going back from Ibercall. Fair enough. All right. Uh, with that, uh, I will allow anyone here who desires it a short rest. Those with exhaustion, probably, and yep. and those now with ex- that those with exhaustion at two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, if you need to return any HP, you take two rolls. If you don't, then exhaustion is taken away. All yeah. right. Dagon will also take up on that rest since there's literally nothing else for him to do here. All righty. Uh, with that rest, take one more sip of your water. <sighs> All right. You two are at half. Uh, you guys and Vagan and the Cobalt are down to half. You got uh, you and Frida. Unfortunately, are down to one last sip. Now I had a bunch of extra water skins that I made sure to get back in town. So how much do I have? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay. So once you're done with one skin, then you put you take that down and you just take out the other one. All I right. still got an entire bottle of expensive scotch, so I'm <laughs> good to be hydrated. <laughs> it's bright in the sun. All right. After two hours have passed, you guys continue on the road. Bat, you get back in disguise. 
I'll have you know I've had two soap from the beginning of our quest. <laughs> I cannot wait till you find a way to use that. <laughs> you're probably going to be getting eaten by something disgusting. I was, and you're just, yeah. was going to say, yeah, by, the, by the way, this whole time, you guys are watching as the vulture is just like eyeing you as, as he looks impatient as he's waiting for you guys to pack up. I could use some target practice. No. You can try, buddy. I did. And then how much did that work for you? It worked one time. Ezra is going to try and be just courteous, just because clearly being an ass is not, has not worked. Uh, Dagon only has one mode. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. Uh, so, so you're just hungry? You're just coming here for the meal? Because there's like towns, and they usually have things available to eat that you could probably just yeah, snag and then, and and then and they shoo and then they shoo me away or something like that happens, and then I don't get anything. I feel like if you came in there talking, there'd probably be at least a handful of people. I tried that curious. once. They called me a witch and threw stuff at me. Uh. Well, are you a witch? No, idiot. Have you always been a vulture? No. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Druid of some sort? Or? No, I used to be what he was. And then I got... Handsome? Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I used to be what he was, and then I got hungry and decided to eat one of the bodies that was lying around. Now, you know, that doesn't seem to fit very well with cannibalism with our kind. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of made that a cardinal sin, and then all of a sudden I started to just transform. This was in the plateau, by the way. Oh, you spent time there, too. Yep. I was one of the inmates they sent over there. How, how long ago? About 200 years. All right, a little before my time. So, so, you've, so you're familiar with the plateau if you were... Well, I mean, I guess you were there 200 years ago. You might not have gone back. Why would I ever want to go back? Yeah, Nobody that's, wants that's, to go back. That's fair. All right, so you might not have an idea of who's currently hanging out around it. So, after a couple of years of just sitting here trying to find a way to break this curse, I never found a way. And I decided, eh, I only live once. And I decided to just... Do what vultures do, and that's wait for things to die and then eat them. All right. He's kind of, he, he pretty much just told you he's resigned to the fact that he's stuck as a vulture. Well, I guess if you accept, you've accepted your lot in life, so can't help you much there. How do you do that thing with the rocks when I was shooting you and you were blocking them with the rocks? Oh, well, that's just what I could do. That's weird. I've been bored with this weird little ability to just be able to move stuff. Hmm. So that was before you became a vulture? Could you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was before. Oh, okay. That's why I actually got thrown into the plateau. Huh. Because I can do stuff like this. You watch as like, one of the kegs starts to lift up. So explain again how you're not a witch. I don't know. Witches don't do that. Witches just usually have cats and fly on brooms. I don't got any of that. He's right. So... The healing people by touching them, that's okay magic. Fine magic. And, and the, the, the wings, that's good magic, but lifting stuff with your mind is bad magic. Well, I became extinguished before this happened. Uh, right, and they're not into that regardless. That I means see. our faith is gone. Well, I mean, look at me now, I'm waiting. Listen, are you going to die or not? Come Eventually. on, where's the food? It's, it's going to take time. I figured we'd just talk first. Oh, must we? I don't talk with my food. Do you have a name? If we each give roll, you, roll if, persuasion. <laughs> if you each do what? I was gonna say, if we each give you our names, would you give you uh, yours? What'd you roll? Uh, my persuasion is uh, sixteen or twenty-six. Sorry. Wow. Wow, you beat him. Yeah. I don't see a point to that. I mean, I'm trying. Shit, what was my name? Huh? You watch as his beady little eyes just like go. Whoop. <laughs> is it meat? No, it's not meat. That was your camel. Well, hey, you remembered your camel. See, everybody remembers meat. It, Press M it, for meat. <laughs> <laughs> is it Aldrin? No. Okay, you just look like an Aldrin. Bit of a buzzard. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I picked up what you're putting down. Oh, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Well, anyways, my name's Ezra. This is Zeloy, Dagon, the Sun Guard, Frida, <laughs> Vagan. Now you have names. You might not want to eat us later. No, I still do. Okay. 
I wanted but to see I, if there I, was any soul guess, left there to appeal but, to. But I guess if we got to give names, I mean, I remember, I think I kind of remember what I was used to be called when I was in the plateau. It was a bandit name. Oh, yes, it was Stretch. 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 Hmm. My time in the, my time they'd usually say, hey, you, or fresh meat, or... Well, I, I lived in the plateau for at least 100 years. Oh, I didn't make it that long. I, I left long before that. So you named your camel after your old prison nickname? One of them, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just an a- extra layer of rela- relatability there. <laughs> well, that opens <laughs> so many fucking questions. <laughs> Remind you, Dagon was a child when he was in prison. <laughs> Well, Ezra looks over at the now named Stretch. <laughs> well, Stretch, it was nice meeting you, and I hope you don't end up having to eat my corpse, but if that's where it's got to go, I guess this is better than any. Don't worry, it's going to a better place. And then pooped out the other end. Terrific. Well, hopefully, maybe our, uh, maybe our, maybe who we're after will, will end up as one of your meals. So hopefully, you know, I hope you like gin. Zesfis Fenar. He says the soul on the other end. Just, again, try not to die anywhere near me. No, absolutely. <laughs> Ulrich is just like, are we ready to go yet? Or um, can we not just kill this thing and be done with it if it's going to cause us trouble? I mean, I don't think it's going to cause us any trouble, but please. I was talking be- about him. Looks to Vagan. <laughs> Oh, he's fine. He's been more helpful than I'll anything. I'll give the same response either way. I said he's probably <laughs> not going to Charles' trouble, but feel free to try. You can try. <laughs> he's inviting it now. Anyway, yeah, yeah, back in the o- carriage. And Ulrich just heard that. He's just like, fucking little shit. I mean, he he's turning Eloy to make... He's making Eloy look like a griffin, so... Think, he, think he's being more helpful than hurtful right now. Plus, he brought the wagon. Yeah. Well, let us be on then. Uh, with that, you guys take off uh, down the hillside again. You start entering a valley. Off in the distance, you start seeing a bunch of ruins kind of peeking out. It looks like this used to be some kind of an outpost that was under was inside like this lower end of the valley. Uh, heading inside, you start seeing that brass cobblestone. And looking about, now it's time to try and find those uh, the tilted towers that almost make out a sort of cross symbol. Which of these towers look more tilted, you think? Unfortunately, there's a lot of towers here. Again, this is an this looks this used to looks look like, like some kind of, of an out, city. Yeah, a ruined outpost of some kind. Okay. Question: We're sitting back in this uh, caravan with the rubies too, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. Now that we are approaching the meeting place, would it behoove us to get in that crate? <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> in case it's needed, I am stealthing with a seventeen into that crate. Yep. So roll a stealth. Dig on. You got it. Frida. Oh, she's got in. She got in now with the with the exhaustion taken away. That is a 16. You're in. Bit of a tight fit, but not the first time. All I'm right. Just squeezing in at small places. <laughs> All right. So, Vagan, uh, the Kobolds, and Eloy are the only ones now seeing out this. And I guess Stretch, too, who's still sitting on top of the wagon. Gonna scan the towers for any that look like what we're looking for. Alrighty. I'll toss you my spyglass before I hop in. If that's gonna give you advantage or anything. Kind of weird that a griffin's <laughs> using a spyglass. It's, it's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a 19 perception. I'll be a monkey's bare-assed uncle. All right. Uh, you see nothing. No, no. <laughs> you see stretch a- is like, it's right there. <laughs> you don't see the tower. However, you could have sworn you saw movement in some of the buildings just off to the... Just like a... Like, you're looking off in the towers. You're like, okay, I kind of guess there might be something... Go- what was that? Something moved in the window in the tower, like, very far to the north of you. I wave my head at it. Call! I say call! <laughs> Good. It says call. Smart as a bag of bowling balls. That, that boy, boy ain't right. Yeah, that boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. <laughs> uh, you saw what looked like some kind of elven humanoid kind of like rustling around in one of the buildings. 
But then after that, it's completely silent and vanished. Everyone else kind of like looked in that distance. They didn't see anything. Call? Like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> We've put too many layers on this. <laughs> Communication is breaking down. Ulmer is kind of like just moves his, uh, moves his ostrich closer. What did you say? I, I whispered to him, I don't want to talk too loud in case they're listening, but there was somebody moving around over in that tower over yonder. What do they look like? Looked like maybe Elvin. It was hard to tell. He picks up what you put down. There are slavers around here. We're walking into an ambush. Call. I'm a much, I'm a much bigger fan of bacon trees. <sighs> well, it looks like Almorad had his back up. We saw it before we walked. We can see the towers off in the distance. They, they like looks over to the side. You can see like there's two towers, like one's further in the foreground than the other one in the background. But from where you're standing, they form a cross shape because of how tilted they are. There is a way to get inside this tower. Like you can, like for you anyway, you can see that there's a door that leads into it. But because of time and the erosion of like everything is blowing on top of this thing, it looks like there's two buildings slapped on top of it. And then going inside, unless you were very, like, careful with how you go up these things, it is possible you could probably, like, shake this thing even looser than it is. It's very, very, very flimsy. Well, you're the only one we could speak to at this point. Do we, like, unless he, like, looks over to, he looks over to one of his allies. He looks over to Verse, and he kind of, like, grunts in Draconic, and he kind of, like, motions them he motions uh, him to move over to the back, knock on the uh, crate that you guys are in. As Omrez kind of like, they, they, they kind of take formation that the other two take up front, and then Omrez and uh, Verz take up the back, and they describe what's going on to you guys. Okay. Well, worst case scenario, I mean, if you get taken prisoner and they just kind of march this straight into where they need it, then we'll be exactly where we want to be. Yeah, my thought is the longer that the longer that Almiron thinks he's in control, the better in a position we are. <sighs> Very well, we're nearing the we are nearing the tower. Are you sure not uh I I can lead the transaction unless any of you think it would be a better idea if one of you should do so. He was expecting you, so we'll keep you we'll keep you up front. And if things if things start to change, we'll make a move. Much as I love to talk, not many around here like those of my persuasion. Hey, can you get into my saddlebag? There's there's a water skin in the in the in the back rear one there. Can you dig that out? He does so. All right, that's full of tonic water. I hear we're going up against a gin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just Josh. No, it's a good plan. Let's do it. No, I like it. <laughs> I'm still in a dream. <laughs> Fuck amongst yourself, my dude. <laughs> anyway, yes. No, the awkward silence is fitting. <laughs> <laughs> we can now, one could say I'm padding, but... <laughs> we confirm with Verz that... We will, in fact, stay in, inside this box, and uh, Omriz can, can lead the exchange. Since the since they had the ransom note and they were told to come alone, I feel like if I'm up front going like, hey, I came to help with this meeting, we would only ca cast more suspicion on the what situation. So before they do continue, uh, Om Omriz says to you, I'm going to lead in with the actual case. If they want, if we can pretend like we have the rest, if they will still be, if they will still agree to us being able to only give them a por portion of the ransom. No, I think th I think that's a good idea. If we open up with the actual rubies that we have, and then be like, and there's more in the car of caravan. Yeah, send that's one lonesome little guard to check. <laughs> <sighs> Don't like it, but. Very well. Well, I don't like that there's an elbow in my ribs, but we're making do. <laughs> Everyone has to live with some sort of thing they don't like You today. watch, there's like a dagger like poking right next to your face. Hmm. Is that the good kind or the... Eh, I, I best don't think not that's a healing dagger. 
No, it's tr it's a straight dagger. You know that's not that's that's <laughs> that's the fucking business end. It's too boring for Frida's daggers. <laughs> <laughs> too vanilla. Any closer, and you will be harmed. <laughs> mm, fair enough. <laughs> uh. All right, so you guys keep going forward. They, uh, they, the caravan stops before, uh, stops before the tower. You hear, like, you guys are in the crate, so you don't see this, Eloy. So we're just gonna pan this over to you, Eloy. Mm -hmm. You now watch as there's some kind of figure up in the tower, like all the way to the top. There's like a little window, one to the side, one to the top, uh, one to the facing forward. A figure kind of like looks like leans over the side. You can't get a good idea of what it looks like, but you could just see like a red hand kind of like put de put itself outside of the window. Are you the boys that were sent to do the transaction? Almer's kind of like like screams out to him. Yes, we are under we are under our employer to make the transaction for the boy. Ah, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right. Well. Did you get all of the money? Omrez, Omrez kind of like goes to the back, shows the case. We have them in separate cases. Cases of three. Wow. Hold on. And now Shot <laughs> through the brain. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Omrez is dead. Please no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Almrad takes that wholeheartedly with a fucking nat one. Oh, all right. Now he buys it. Now, uh, Almrad takes that. Almrez then, then says, show us the boy. He looks, you look, you watch Eloy as over the window, a small, like, a small, very scrawny and looks very, like, broken, like, Almost like when someone picks up a puppet by the top of the by the top of the torso and holds it up. That's how stilted this kid looks as he holds him over the window and dangles him. This kid looks fucking famished, thirsty, beaten. This kid is broken. It's a red dragonborn child. You're like ev everyone in the every one of the kobolds like flinch as that happens. As this big fat arm kind of like holds him out of the window. Just be very happy Wake isn't here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of what I was thinking when we were talking about slavers and stuff. I was like, uh oh, is there, oh, there's, some, there, here. there's some violence that could be happening right now. <laughs> He's right here, safe and sound. Well, it's about as safe as I could accommodate for him. Uh, he has, he's a little bit of a fighter, just like his uh, good old dad. His good old dad was a biter too. Left a nice little scar on good old Almarad's face. Didn't like business doing with him. So I returned the favor to his kid. Pulls his face closer into the sunlight and you see half his face is scarred. But don't worry, he'll still live. He won't be pretty, but he'll still live. Pulls him back in. Now, which one of you will be coming up? Again, Omarad, uh, Omarad's big fat hand kind of like leans out as the only thing that's visible. Which one of you lovely fellas is gonna come up here and give old Omarad what he's been due? What do you want? <laughs> I just whisper out to whichever kobold is closest to me to. <laughs> that would. Uh, you, you gotta be careful because there's people around. Uh, roll a uh, roll a stealth. Uh, yeah, Dagon's been shutting the fuck up, just waiting. Modified 20 on stealth, whispering. Uh, Nur is right next to you. Okay. If he refuses to investigate the caravan, just tell him there's too much to bring up by hand. We'll be leaving the caravan here, here with him. Just tell him that. We need to get someone down here. Nir will try to mumble that to <laughs> Almrez in Draconic. With a nat 20, the level one schmuck character passed by. Because <laughs> if, if his statement is, someone's got to bring up those rubies, be like, oh, we, it's a lot. You should probably send someone to grab them. We will leave, like, he looks at that as Almarat, as, uh, 
Omariz, uh kind of like is taken over to the side as Nur begins talk, uh, talking to him. What's that now? As he holds out the kid with a scimitar to his throat. <laughs> we, are discuss we are discussing how to bring it towards you. Leave the child alone. Oh, that pass is just barely. The sword is pulled away from Zerl's throat. But he's still hung outside the building. They begin conversing to each other. They speak in Draconic. You're seeing this, tran this transaction happen before you. Do you want to roll another perception check real quick? Sure. 23. You can see four drow on both sides of buildings that you're in the middle of. They are looking outside the window. They don't notice that they see you just yet, thinking that you're just some kind of animal. But there is an ambush of at least eight other drow waiting in the buildings. Word. I and two of them look like they're actually chanting something, almost summoning something. Who's, uh, what kobold is closest to me? Closest to you, at this current point, would be Almrez and Nier. I try to whisper to Almrez. We're surrounded by drow. I think some of them are spellcasters. Roll stealth. Actually, how how will you... You can say this, yes. Mm -hmm. Give me that stealth roll. Uh, modified 20. Okay, hmm. now roll a performance check to pretend like you're a griffin. Where were you when Eloy became this Hanna-Barbera as fucking drow? He became the speed buggy of, uh, <laughs> of griffins. 16 on the performance check. Rut row, roll, Marais. <laughs> Fuck. Reload racks? <laughs> yeah, no, you're able to perform. Uh, go ahead and uh, describe your performance. <laughs> so I just act as though I'm ruffling my feathers to cover the sound of uh, of my whispers, and just. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, there's some fucking drow. Like four over there, four over there, <laughs> and then appear to settle down. <sighs> Very well. We'll try it this way then. Almarez, uh gets off his uh, gets off his ostrich and stands like up uh, st steps a little bit forward, showing that he's like making himself defenseless. We will offer you the entire carriage, everything inside. Wait, what? Says <laughs> says Vagan. <laughs> Vagan was not cued in on this plan. <laughs> hey, man, things changed. <laughs> He did say that out loud, though. That's not great. <laughs> Fucking NPCs, man. <laughs> that wasn't part of that. You watch as one of the other kobolds kind of like takes his spear and puts it to him. Damn it. <laughs> we will give you the entire carriage. In ex uh, I do want to just confirm this with the rest of the chat. Where did we get cut off? Well, we can just well, redo that scene, basically. Part of just, it, anyway. Or just like the idea yeah. of... the Just, just... Long story short, basically, we, uh... We're going to show them the massive crate and say, hey, there's no way we can move all this by with one person. Well, I'm going to roll an intelligence check for Almrez real quick. Sure. Okay. Yeah. The plan he's, I... Uh, the he's, going to, he's going to go along with your plan, but he does okay. tell you he wants to try something. He wants to coax to see if he can say if he has other people alongside of him. Okay. To try and pro process like some kind of a better head count of everyone else that he has working with him. Are you alone? We have a crate. We can bring it up towards you. But there is only four of us. If you have others, we would need assistance. Okay. And now for Omrad. Omrad fucking failed. Okay. Super bad. So he kind of just like... He goes, Show me the crate first! He, he looks to the lot of you as he gets to the other four kobolds. Are you ready? Do our best to, to hide. It's just a big-ass crate. <laughs> if he looks at a box, it's not exactly us screaming out at him. Frida, please put the knife away. 
there's more knives. Just like every, every she's holding on to knives everywhere. Just like I'm ready. <laughs> they will feel. They will feel the glorious pain. Yes, but not before me. I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, they pull. They pull the crate out. They show it. They show it off to him. As as they're passing by me again, bringing the crate the crate out, I'm gonna try and try and whisper to Almaraz again. Hey, hey, I have a scroll of Featherfall. If you can get him to drop the boy, I can save him. If you can throw the boy out the window, I guess. <laughs> we'll use that as a last ditch effort. That's fine. Just letting you know, man. Roll a sleight of hand for that. All right. Seven. He rolled a nine. He got that. Okay. It's like the griffin begins to, like, <laughs> rise up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, our, our bird is just a little startled. <laughs> he shows the crate, sets it before you, Eloy. You watch as... Almrad kind of just pulls the boy back inside. He screams out, You heard him, lads! Bring the crate up here! Oh, boy. <laughs> no, not with yourselves, with the help! And you actually, now, you see as there's, ma- there's arcane magic kind of spewing out from both of the buildings. As from the earth, it almost looks like a water-like ripple. Uh, the earth doesn't shake or shatter. It just almost looks like a dewdrop hit a little bit of a lake and it's going in slow motion as these weird golem-like creatures with a singular eye, three arms, one sticking out the side and one sticking out the back, and it has a giant maw coming up from the top of its head, rises up, not disturbing the earth, and when they fully completely rise up, they're nine feet tall, they stop and the earth stops rippling as they start lumbering over to go get the box. Do you want to roll an Arcana check to see what the fuck that is? Guessing they're the the golems we've been hearing about, but with an Arcana of eight. Arcana of eight? No, Mm -hmm. let me see what Vagan thinks. Vagan's just sitting there listening. That sounds ominous. (laughs) Vagan just sits there and goes, oh no, it's Zorn. I really hope no one was wearing jewelry inside that box. I might have jewelry, but I don't think I'm wearing any. Nothing that would constitute something valuable. The two lumbering masses kind of like meander their way over to the box. They lift it up. And they he uh, you hear Almorad from the top say, All right. The four of you walk in first. The help will follow. They do so, and they go inside, and you watch. At, you and Vagan watch as they disappear into the tower. Can I still see the the drow on either side? You see the spellcasters that are using the two Zorn, but you don't see the others. Hmm. And with that, we're going to have to cut you off right there. <laughs> yeah, that's trying to figure out some way out of this. But yeah, anything I can think to do would be real bad when all those eyes are on me. Don't so. worry, I'm sure there'll be a signal for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so the lot of you, unfortunately, you don't see what's going on. So I will, ex- I will explain to the best of my ability what you feel for being inside this crate. You, The entire crate shifts to the left. As Ooh. something is holding one side up more than the other one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, this is awkward. You hear a mirror of yourself of the DM. You hear God twice in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> you hear Ben trying to look at chat while he waits <laughs> and screwing it up. <laughs> uh, so you guys feel the crate kind of tilt to the side. I need the three. I need you two and Frida to roll a uh, acrobatics check to keep balance. I mean, shifting doesn't seem like it's going to be that much of an issue in here, but I got a 17. 21. 21. Frida, unfortunately, was not prepared for this and hits the side of the crate. She doesn't open it, but it does feel like it's loose, to which you hear Almrez on the outside. It was just the crate. There's more inside. Please keep... He's, he's like, trying to defuse the, the Zorn 
not because you heard that. You heard uh, yeah, you you heard uh, Vagan say that it was Zorn, and you don't unless any of you want to roll a knowledge arcana. No I'll reason try. not to. Three, six. Rita gets a sixteen. She knows what that Ooh. is. Well, she can't she confirm can't it exactly right now. Tell but us anything, yeah, but she can't confirm right now. But when when you hear Vagan say something about Zorn, Frida kind of shrivels a little bit, like, oh no. All right, so that's bad news, as I assumed. Uh, free. Okay, so Frida kind of tries to get her balance. I'll give her one more go. She made it. She gets her balance. She pretends like she's dead weight for that hot second. Then you feel yourselves getting pushed more and more. You start to hear muffled voices from the outside as the only clear voice you can get is Omrez as he's speaking. We have the crates as bargained. Let the boy go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to perception. <laughs> yes, yeah, same. Perception with that, I did 16, trying to hear as much as I can. I got a modified 20. Oh, modified 20? Yeah. Uh... Pretty much at this point, it's uh, it's Almred and Omez trying to talk to each other. Like you, you show you show your stuff first. No, you show your stuff first. So it's like a battle of seeing who's gonna get which of the transaction first. And with their wordplay, sadly, it looks like Almred is going to get the first look. I have a box of 50 rubies. Now, if we can just pry open one of these boards and have it look like there's just a stack of rubies there. I have 300 on me, apparently. The suit, you do have the suitcases, too. But they're on... Are they, I thought they were in the other pallet. Yeah, I was going to say, are they, are they in the no, crate he, with he, us? No, Al- Almrez put them inside the box with Oh, okay. You. If, yeah, then, then we will try to... So, currently... Dagon has the real one, Ezra has the trap one, and Frida has the fake one. I have the real one, you say. Mm. Okay. So you have a lot of rubies on you. So how is... I'm going to give you 30 seconds to figure out what you're going to do real quickly. How big are these? Uh, how big are these? Like, if we stack them on top of ourselves and we just hunch down, would it look like the entire thing has, like, a false lid? If you put them all together, you might be able to do so, but that was going to require a big roll. Well... That seems like my best. <laughs> what bet. we what we have so far. All right. If you that, if you start holding yours up, uh, Ezra would definitely. I, I just tap. Mm. Mm. That is a. Is that mm. stealth sleight of hand? No, no. Hand I'm gonna or... I'm figure it out. Uh, gonna da, 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 I'm gonna say this is a sleight of hand check. Yeah. Okie dokie. It's the same roll for me either way. Same. Nineteen. Twenty three. Free to guy in that twenty. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Almrad uh, opens up the box. You guys don't see him because you're holding it up above you. He has no idea that there's an extra bit. But however, Dagon, you feel you feel your crate open and get pushed down upon. Roll a strength check. Athletics. Yep. Good. I'm pretty good at athletics. That is a twenty-four. This man has some heft to him, but you're able to keep it up, but it's really hard, and you're keeping it from not slipping. He starts looking through one of the ru- He starts looking at the rubies. Mm, very good. Very good. You feel him release you. I'm going to roll an intelligence check for Almorad. Oh, let me roll again. I've rolled on its side. I have too many things in this board. I apologize. Okay, uh, he kind of like closes the board back down as you guys watch as like the darkness kind of seeps in. All right, now let me check the other one. What would you like to do? As he's going to open the side where Frida is. Uh, Frida, she got the nat 20, right? But is she, wait, what, which crate does she have? She has the fake one. The one with no rubies in it? No, the fake rubies. The, the one that Ezra has has the trap one. Okay. Um, you have, you have it. He closed the crate and he's going to open it from the other side. You have a second to do something. I guess I would trade boxes with Frida. Just like, try and just maneuver. Sleight of hand. God damn. Uh, that is a 22. 18 for me. Slip, slip, slip. I'm, 
I can take a fucking snapshot of it right now and show you that's another nat 20 for Frida. I believe it. I've gotten several nat 20s tonight. Yeah. So you're, you're not talking at the people to, uh, to argue with you on that one. <laughs> yep, so... Slip, slip, slip. Yep, just... <laughs> box opens on that and I will side. And I will help bolster whatever strength she needs. Because I I felt his girth. <laughs> Well, Ezra is right next to her, so it's you. Then oh, Ezra. I thought she—I thought she was in between us. No, she's not in between. She's on the other side. Oh shit! Well, you have to help. I'll, her. I'll try. All right. So, do you want to assist her in the strength check? Yes. It's All right, two well. per. It's two people versus the. All right. So let's see. I have a plan in case this all falls out. So don't she's worry. gonna need the help because now she just rolled a seven. Great. Well, I rolled a fifteen. Okay. Now let me see what happens with Almarez. Which is actually maybe one of the best athletic rolls I've had. Not Almarez. I'm sorry. Uh, Almarad. Omarad gingerly baby fingers his way into the coins. I'm going to roll a intelligence check for him because he did kind of jarble the first one to see if he catches that. Wait a minute. This looks the same. It could just be random jostling. What? I, I don't <laughs> nope. He's too dumb to realize it. Wait a minute. My fingerprints on this. This all feels real good to me. Yep. So he shuts that one. But now he starts to open the entire thing the entire way. Zito, is there uh, are there any slats in this box that I might be able to look through? Roll me an investigation check. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yes, you All right. you can see out a little bit of a crack on the side of the crate. All right, with a uh, I'm guessing, can I make a perception check to see like how many guards he might have in this room with him? Like, at least from one angle? From one angle that you're looking at, you're looking at this giant stone creature that's holding the crate. Okay. You can see what looks like the outlining of a giant red monstrous eye on the side of the wall. Okay. So he's opening the entire lid now, then. Yep. Well, then we're just <laughs> holding steady <laughs> until... Um, now I've got that case open on me. So I was going to say, I'm just going to ready my crossbow if it's just like, shit, oh, he's opening the door. You know, he he opened it all the way, and he sees the cra he sees the boxes. Almrez right. kind of like tries to peek up before this anything else happens. Is the transaction good? He like He's trying to like persuade him to be hey. like, are we good? Yeah, by the way, I've readied an action for uh, basically, should this transaction start going wrong, I'm ready to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. Is this good? Did we... We have given you what you asked for proper. Hmm. All right. Almarez got a 14. That plus his charisma, which is on here, that's a 17. Oh my god. Almarad is fucking dumb as bricks. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I suppose so. You hear what you hear, like, almost as sinew snapping as... He, it's from a distance. You hear sinew snapping, and then you hear something get thrown off to the distance nearby where Almrez was. Once they have the kid... That's when we go. Oh, We're done here. Now get out of here before I change my mind to have you killed. Do we hear them leaving? <laughs> After some time, you hear the skittering of small feet leaving through the tower. All right. Now, as I'm looking out, do I, like, is the creature still holding the box? Is that all I can see they're through standing that to the, you're, They're standing to the side. They let go of the box at this point. You're on the floor. Okay. Is there anything else I can see through this slat? Uh, you can only see the creature on the right of you. Hmm. With a perception check, can I, like, try to hear if there's any, like, anybody that... Almarad might, or yeah, Almarad might be talking to in the room anymore. Uh, go for it. All right. Uh, perception check of sixteen. Seven. You don't hear the statue creatures. Like they almost seem like they're completely silent yeah. and stand still. Uh, you do hear the footsteps of a really heavy person walking over to the distance. Possibly to look out the window. Yo, let's just push him out that window. If we pop up, these statues might see us. I am going to... So it's just us and the stone statues and Almorad, as far as we're aware, in this room. As you're aware, that's what you hear. Okay. 
Uh, well, but I'm going... But remember, you are on a little bit of a slant because the tower is tilted. That is fine. I, I, am, I will not... I cannot All I need is memes. knowledge of where Almorad is, and if I was hearing him, then I know where he is. You heard him walk a little bit more towards the distance, uh, a little bit more to the left of you. All right. I have a spell called Enemies Abound that the target must make an intelligence save or see every creature around it as an enemy. So, in Almorad's head, he is going to start hearing in his own voice, Ah, finally, all this money, mine. But what of those wretched drow? What if? What if? Hmm. Uh, does this spell require visuals? I do not believe so. I would have written that down. I can check real quick for you. Yeah, yeah, let's just double check that. Hopefully it's not in Xanathar's. If it is, I can look it up. So what's the name of the spell? Enemies Abound. Enemies Abound. If this doesn't work, yeah, just... Yeah, I think it's in Xanathar's. I got it. Enemies Abound. Uh, it requires visuals. All right. Is there another slat where I can get a good look at him? Roll me another uh, investigation check. All right. That's all I need. That is a uh, 19. There is one in front of you. You see shift, what shift, you, shift. S- <laughs> you see what looks like a really rotund, red-skinned creature kind of off to the distance wearing a half shirt and really, really big, poofy pants. Uh, but you can only get, like, a small visual of it. You can only assume that this must be Almorad. Well, I am casting the spell on that gentleman. Very well. Uh, he must make an intelligent save, which we've proven so far, not a bright guy. No, he's not. Versus DC 16. Versus a DC 16? Yes. Ha Got a 13. Well, uh, these two Zorn that were by us, he's instantly seeing them as villains and anything else in the room that he can see as a villain. He sees them all as enemies. All right. The moment that uh, you kind of like, you can barely see him like kind of like perch up in his mind. He's just like, ah, yes, everything's working. Everything's working too well. Hmm. Well, it's a good thing I have a backup. He kind of like marches, he kind of like see him waddle on over to the other window. He picks up what looks like a gemstone that almost has the same markings as what you saw from uh, uh, from what Hippolyte was talking about when the Neris were looking for an artifact that had that same Molten Man picture on it. Mm-hmm. It has a gemstone. I need you to roll me a knowledge. Uh, I need you to roll me a... Intel, just a straight intelligence check. You're the only one who, can, who has a visual, so. Well, that's a seven. It's just a gemstone that has the same <laughs> marking to you. What a, fucking weird. what a nice looking rock. Why isn't he killing these things? Chick, work harder. He kind of like turns and he, he kind of turns around. You now see this man's like covered in what looks like broken up pieces of plate on his front. Uh, he has broken plate on the front of him. He actually looks like he's carrying a necklace of dismembered heads. But he's still wearing, like, this royal garb attire. He has, like, a really fas- fashionable uh, sash of a belt. He kind of, like, waddles on over to the crate. You can actually see, like, this man needs to, like, heft himself, like, shift, shift to walk. That's how big he is. Gotcha. The moment he gets closer to there, like, you can only see parts of his stomach at this point. Okay. You can feel the heat rem- uh, emanating off this man as he gets closer. He looks to the Zorn, and you hear like this humming light. And the Zorn, ki- when they gave, when they kind of rose from the ground, they almost gave off this weird like they gave the rippling effect to these guys. They had no idea what this looks like before. This time, they actually look like they're crumbling and turning into into like dust as he's holding the gemstone out to them. And their lava dis, uh, di- uh, disappears, or uh, not their lava. I'm I'm apologize. They they stop moving. Their eyes kind of shrivel and leave like a little bit of an eye socket, 
and you watch as Almorad puts his hand right on top of the creature's eye, and it's now filled with lava as he's injecting it with lava, being a fire din. The creatures then stand up at attention, go take care of them. The Zorn turn around and meander on off. You watch as the kobolds come out with the kid. Like, they're kind of, like, holding him up, like, five, like, five, like, maybe, like, five, ten minutes later, that passes by. You watch as the kid is being ferried out by the kobolds, and they kind of get him into the back. And then Ve you hear Vagan kind of whisper, like, what about the others? We had to leave them up there. We don't know what to do. And then, right after, like, as five minutes go, another five minutes go by, you watch as the Zorn meander their way back outside, but this time, instead of just fleshy eyes, they actually have lava. He should be attacking his allies for- Oh, they're- they're walking okay. towards the rooms that they're Gotcha, supposed gotcha. To be in. Towards the, uh, towards the drow. Yep. And at this point, you're watching as Almorad's big fat hand is now leaned over as he's- as this one side of his face is completely charred, and the other side of his face just looks like a regular, like, really bloated, like, red-skinned man in a little, in a turban, kind of like pulls out his head and watches the fireworks happen. As you watch as, with a big explosion, lava starts spewing out from inside the room. And I'm guessing the drow are screaming. Yep. And I'm just in there, well, that was my pot. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. What, what were you rolling for? What were you rolling for? <sighs> well. I attempt to stealthily exit the crate as he is, has his head out the window. But I happen to roll a seven. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> he sees your hand. I've been double-crossed! Oh, in for a penny. <laughs> and that's where we'll stop here. God damn! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. At least we got rid of the drow. Gonna go ahead and say it now, since it's obviously not gonna work. My plan was to sneak out and then just try and rush him when he was at that window and just force him out. I have been waiting for a good chance to use this spell. I've, I've been like, okay, I need a big, stupid brute yeah. to cast this on so that they will take out all of their friends. I have to say, you guys actually walked away with this in a very different fashion than how I thought you would, and I'm very happy that you did. <laughs> no, I am excited. We, are, we now have quite a few rubies. <laughs> yes. Right? Oh, they got damaged in the fire. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Just pockets. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I I actually like made it out. Like I made a couple of like scenarios of like what would happen. Like kid plus Almorad plus Drow taken care of or never summoned as the best ending. Mm -hmm. I did not. <laughs> I did not expect for the Drow to get fucking hosed by their own leader. Yeah. That was great. Uh, no, I'm super fucking, happy about I that. I fucking love it. I fucking, like, as soon as I saw that spell, I'm like, you know what? My entire gimmick is I'm going with something that, like, devours minds and corrupts things. This spell fits that flavor perfectly. <laughs> you fucking played his greed so bad that he killed his hired help. That is super good. I love this so far. Well, I can't and you got the kid out, too, so that's even better. <laughs> yeah, bonuses. Yeah, nice. <laughs> my, my original plan for getting the kid out was going to be if, if he was going to keep on doing that fight... We've got stretch up there. I was just gonna be like, I guarantee there's food for you if you can float that kid out of his hand. <laughs> yeah, like at the moment the moment that fucking explosion happens, the last thing you hear out of stretch is, "How am I gonna eat that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's burnt. It's fucking burnt. <laughs> Assholes flies away. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, we aren't done here yet. First of all, tune in next week because I really want to see what happens here. Yeah. But we also got some fan art to look at. Woo! Oh boy. Yes, both here and on Fridays, you can catch fan art from our wonderful, wonderful community. Mm -hmm. But let's start it off with this lovely picture of everybody's favorite punchy princess with her beautiful club. This is by Kuravix underscore art or nice. Artie Vix. I hey, love, I love, I, I love, I love toothy grins. Yeah, toothy no, grins are that great. Big smiles, good. I also like the just the. You're clearly in mid motion of the bat, just it's 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 also like the you're in the wrong neighborhood yeah, kind yeah. of smile yeah. that she's given, and I love it. <laughs> oh, you wish you didn't come here. Oh, you wandered. Uh, you wandered real wrong. Let me tell you that much. But thank you so much, 
Travix underscore art for the yep. wonderful, wonderful piece. Next up, by <laughs> Captain Gamer. Ooh. See, here's the problem is that Captain Gamer also did like a bunch of oh, other yeah. ones that were in a set, but I'm just like, we have to pick the one. Yeah, and this one was actually put in a, uh, in a scene. setting, in a scene. Uh, we got Dagon May Cry here <laughs> waiting for his next contract. Uh, even the inclusion of the five silver pieces around his neck, I love it. Thank nice. you so much. This is a 3D sculpture, yeah, by the way. Yeah, this is a 3D sculpture, and it looks fantastic. Uh, I'm actually half tempted to eat what is on his plate there. It looks... Oh, wow, yeah, that like, does look yeah. good. Yeah. That is that looks like some good like potatoes and yeah, it's like, it's and like a shit. nice chaketry board right oh, you know, there. It looks like sausage. I just looked at it. Also, his eyes glowing. Very nice yeah. touch. Yeah, Great I like how stuff. He, how, how him and Griorchik are. Oh, I like how he and Griorchik are both like very shadowy and like in the dark, but the eyes are just like glowing, really illuminated. It, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Thank you kindly, CPT Gamer, Captain Gamer. Mm-hmm. Next up. <laughs> We got Timothy Wake with Jones. <laughs> Timothy Jones. We got Wake with a turtle on his head. And that's at Timothy 96460251. He's got a very Simpsons expression. I was gonna say on. he looks yeah, very yeah. satisfied. He, look, he, looks with this ve- he looks very Nelson Muntz. <laughs> 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 you got a turtle. I'm in danger. <laughs> Great looking stuff. Uh, I love it a lot. I also like the uh, spiky like beard flaps he has. Mm. Thank I'll call you Sheldon. Yeah, thank you kindly, Timothy Jones. Great stuff. Speaking of wakes, stuff. Speaking of wakes and toothy grins. <gasps> up next, by <laughs> Void oh, Monkey. Jesus. And they actually comment on here. I don't know why Wake always does this thing where he shoots whoever a tooth like whoever a toothy grin a grin whenever he receives one. <laughs> I'm okay. I know, like this is kind of weird, but I am a big fan of like Wake's. Like Wake has like the the zoot suit shoulder pad. For oh yeah, mu- for actual anatomy. <laughs> yeah, just like just like shark fin, like yeah. just very boxy. Just he. <laughs> I think we started that off when uh, that that was back on Jahal, like the first time that Wake did the toothy grin thing. Yeah. yeah. When he was sucked underwater by the quicksand after like the innumerable uh, natural ones, <laughs> and then that barrage is there, and then I finally got that Hannibal Andal Hannibal. The, Animal handle. Yeah, animal animal handle, handle, yes. Animal handle. And then that fish is just like, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hello. Hello, fellow fish. <laughs> How do you do? But thank you kindly, symbiotic void monkey, or at void monkey. I love it. Next up, by art from <laughs> BBD, we got the Lockwood Natural Wonders, Dagon, Dagon Days. <laughs> This is so good. You, you, got a, you got a big heap of gratitude from our tech oh, guy. Yeah, no, really this is, loves this. This is great. When I saw it, I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is perfect. I fucking love it. Uh, thank you kindly. At the, uh, that art from BBD. Next up. From V-Trance. V-Trance underscore. V-trance. We got... Yo Mama Eloy, ready to bust <laughs> out that size. Them kissy lips. Look at that. Mm. Blow. Is that wow. all you've got? Get that sass. <laughs> Eloy got that sass. He's got. He's one sassy ass. There yeah, we go. I was going to say, all that sass up in that ass. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vitrance. Next up. And this is something that I was thinking about, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we wanted to lure out those vampires, just get a bunch of bandages for uh, Dagon and say, like, there's a, there's a pirate out there who's willing to sell blood, like the blood from his slave. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we got this damn blood bag. There's nothing good for it except it's full of blood. If only someone needed that. It, <laughs> it's, it's a very always sunny in Philadelphia no, style. I love it. Yeah. That's actually a like, very good scam. Scheme. That fucking, that fucking face that Ezra has is just priceless. <laughs> the first time I saw it, I thought he had fake vampire fangs in. <laughs> I was like, oh. Yeah, he's, he's delicious. I love it. I, I bite into him every night when I wake up. Oh, it's the best. You should try it. Don't look too thick. <laughs> that and Dagot just sassy. Yes, yep, right there. Yeah, just, just do it. Right in the jugular. It'll be just fine. <laughs> you guys don't have any ways to detect if he's some sort of, I don't know. Just, uh. This guy looks like generic anime vampire number three, and that, oh, that yeah. just makes it even better to me. <laughs> yeah, generic, like, no, generic vampire anime butler. Mm. Reminds me of the demon that like scared Karama with his mom. Oh, in the yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> 
I was going to say, it looks like an extra in one of the anime-only episodes of the Helsing TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. From the Real Alpha 2. Real Alpha 2. Marcus Busting Drew. out that Dagon mm. with Griorchik in hand. The, mm. These inks are amazing. Oh, I yeah. Love them. Ink, Inktober doing it a solid here. Just, dear God. like that, that is some great just black and white contrast. My favorite thing about this is... Uh, Dagon's face, but then also, uh, like, the way the blade is sitting in the hilt of uh, Gryorchik. Mm -hmm. Like it's coming that, out that, of a mouth there. Yeah, it's like like it's coming out of, like, a stout of a dragon or something that yeah. looks so sick. It feels I, I, like the manga panel where, like, fucking uh, Dagon says something along the lines of, like, well, I guess now we're going to have to try. Or <laughs> No one crosses <laughs> blades with the wraith of Ibercall and lives. Weird, very smart, but... Yes, it, it, and, and Gryorchik, the old gobbler. Very, very, very important. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're here too. But thank you kindly at the Real Alpha Two. Great stuff. Next up, by Ruben N. Ruiz Jr. <laughs> yeah, we got that big yo mama That's fight. Pretty good. Yeah, we were looking at this uh, yeah, last we, Friday. Look at yeah, that Broadway you, McSlander. You get in close on this one, and there is so, so much, much detail. There's a fucking battle toad in the background. That's, yeah. yeah oh like, my God, there is. <laughs> I, and I, you, you see Nedra standing back there. It's great. Yeah. I, I in the background. Like, I feel like the background is like a bunch of extras in a She-Ra or He-Man like <laughs> like fancy ball or villains gallery. And Why am so no Grizzlor? <laughs> yep. The Grizzlor's out there in the background. Grizzlor just here to make sure everyone's having a good time. Grizzlor, I'm here for the sport of competition. <laughs> Grizzlor, no choose sides. <laughs> Thank you kindly, Ruben N. Ruiz what Jr. What a season, what a season. <laughs> Grizzlor feel, yo mama jokes fine, but should they not be balanced out by equal number of yo father jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Grizzlor equal opportunity insulter. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> we got a happy Eloy. Woo! Hooray! This is him after, like, the fucking... This is him after the, uh... The Griffin facade goes away. <laughs> Hooray! Oh, no. I'm a donkey man again. <laughs> this is by Akira Keoro, A-K-I-R-A-K-E-O-R-O -E -O -O on Twitter. Whose and their commissions, commissions are, are open. open. They are indeed. And I'm loving the line art here. Very oh, good yeah. stuff. I also love the, uh, the <laughs> texture on the hooves. Oh, yeah, the cross-hatching mm -hmm. that's going on down there. That's oh, really yeah, good. Yeah. Cross-hatching... Well, I'll say this: cross hatching has a lot of ways that it could look bad, but also if you get it perfectly, it looks amazing. Real good, yeah. Also, I love the uh, the sponge effect in Eloy's hair and in his like fur. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. Thank you kindly, Akira Kiro. Yeah, <laughs> Akira Kiro. Next up, we got Frida. some Frida, Frida Gazamar here from Nikki T Square. Nikki T Square with some Frida Gazamar. I wouldn't mind being locked in a box with that for a little bit. No. Nah. But she's got the straight knives. You know shit's going Oh, yeah, down. no, he was leaning away. She's <laughs> like, oh, God, she's ready. No, also, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no, don't get handsy, but... <laughs> also, if at a glance, would you believe if someone was like, no, this is a, like an extended universe Sith Lord or something? Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, she looks like... Um, oh, God, what's... Uh, Asajj uh, Yeah, she looks like Asajj Ventress a bit. There's a specific race that I was thinking mm -hmm. of. Like the Geth Rocky or something, so. something like that. Am I wrong into saying that might be the last one? No, one more. There is oh, one, one more. more. One more. And it is. Ooh. Oh, Frida using her uh, her misstep Ooh. by Marvel Poison. And I, I love that her misstep is just Itachi Ravens. <laughs> it is. It uh, it says that. In was that the, was that the inspiration or was that no? Like, that's that, in the lore. Oh, that's really cool. That in in the lore of so her somebody race of really elves. so somebody who made the yeah. lore really liked Itachi. Yeah, I remember you gave me the list of moves, and I was like, oh man, that is just <laughs> fucking Itachi. Yep. <laughs> yep. The uh the race of uh, elf that she is are in respondents to the Raven Queen. So okay, that one makes of, sense. One of her abilities is a misstep that she turns into a flock of ravens and returns in form thirty feet away. Either way, that looks fantastic. Thank you very much, Marvel Poison, and thank you everybody for contributing to such an amazing fan art community and for all of your support. You mean the world to us, guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next time at the table later. Prepare for fighting. Bye. Mm -hmm.